offensive line. They have four guys that have been out since the start of the season. Two guys starting tonight that have played all season, and one of them, Monroe Mills, is currently playing with a significant knee injury. Jeff Brom told us he, this is a squad that he likes to be able to upfront sub guys in and out. He won't have that luxury tonight. The starting five will have to play a majority of the snaps tonight, Bob. Now, Lewis, that pass rush is going to be, you would think, not just going to be coming after Tyler Shuck, but coming after him in numbers tonight for Clemson. No doubt. I would, I would expect defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin, Goodwin to send five or more at a very, very high clip. Try and put Tyler Shuck under duress right from the get-go. Make it difficult for him. Okay, hands on the return. And he won't even get to the 20-yard line. So let's take a look at our player spotlight brought to you by Royal Caribbean. As Clemson begins with the football, and that means we take a closer look at the numbers that Cade Klubnik has put up. And you mentioned the 20 touchdown passes. That puts him in the top four in America, tied with Tyler Shuck. Now he has just been so efficient here now in the second year in Garrett Riley's offense here at Clemson, the offensive coordinator. And he said, look, I'm on the same page with Garrett Riley. I know what he's going to call even before he calls it. He's like an extension of the coaching staff on the field. Thrown with great anticipation. I think you're in for a treat. This kid can spin it. That's Jake Brinning's stool in motion. And they'll run it with the workhorse running back, Phil Maffa. And he is up the middle for about three, although... Phil Maffa, the workhorse running back, but they will spread it around in the passing attack. He loves throwing to Brenning Stool as he much as he likes it to spread around to those wide receivers. Flags down. Ball start. Offense number 74. Five yard penalty. Second down. So the left guard, Marcus Tate, will put Clemson behind the chains. I think if you're defensive coordinator Ryan English from Louisville, you just want to keep things simple here. They've had a lot of issues as far as communication errors on this side of the ball. You just want to keep Clemson in front of you. Clubman with a check down. Mafa. Brought down. T.J. Quinn led the team last year in tackles, leading the team this year in tackles, and it's third down to 12. This is the kind of third and third down and distance that you want if you're defensive coordinator Ryan Ellis. Look, you just now, you want to make sure that your team is playing with good eyes, rushing the passer with lane integrity. Kate Klubna can take off and pick up first downs with his legs, but if you're Louisville, this is the kind of start you're looking for. Klubnik again to Maffa. Breaking tackles as best he can. Broke one, but gets ridden out of bounds by Teon Holloway. And that's a three and out and a terrific start for a defense for Louisville that has struggled at times. As they rushed five, they brought an extra man trying to get some heat on K, but they played nice zone coverage in the back end. Good vision. Just kept the ball in front of them. Came up, rally, make the tackle. But this Louisville defense has been under fire all season long. They've tried to simplify some things for this football game and see if they can get off to a much faster start. Aiden Swanson gets away a short kick. Quincy Riley lets it bounce. And it takes a bit of a Clemson roll, but good field position for Louisville after a 42-yard punt at their own 38-yard line. We mentioned all of the injuries up front. Tyler Shuck might have to get on his horse at times to protect himself tonight, but he certainly has experience on his side. A seventh-year senior, began his career at Oregon, went to Texas Tech. He was 8-1 at Texas Tech as a starter. Overall, 17-7 and in his career as a starter. Making the most of his last year of college football at Louisville. 
And on first down, simple down and out. Confidence building throw to get things started to Chris Bell. Yeah, simple rhythmic throw for Tyler Shuck. Look, he told us when we talked to him, he wants more of the onus put on him. Meaning he wants to control things at the line of scrimmage. He wants to go fast, and you see him here. They're starting off right now trying to up the tempo and really put it on Tyler to make good decisions. And here's the freshman running back. Isaac Brown tripped up at midfield, but he's got a first down. And he is a game breaker, Lewis. He is someone that jumps off the screen. Seven and a half yards per carry, top ten in America. Yeah, leading all freshman running backs in FBS in yardage. Needs about 300 plus yards in order to go over a thousand for the season. It's had a dynamic year for the Louisville Cardinals. Play action. He's got a one on one. Looking for Ja'Cory Brooks. And the Louisville sideline can't believe a flag didn't come out. Avion Terrell, a terrific cover corner. Looked like he might have had a hold of Ja'Cory Brooks. Sure did. But he's really just one on one running a simple go route. Looked like he may have been tucking on the jersey. Four man rush. Check down. One on one tackle. Lasso down by Jaden Lucas behind the line of scrimmage to make it third and long. See Jaden Lucas, you're going to see him here from the high end zone. Look, you'll see him coming to your screen. They were playing a two deep shell type coverage. He's just playing it top down on the outside as kind of a flat defender in a cover two. Look, broke on it perfectly. This secondary for Clemson is young and aggressive now. This power rushing front, they are huge up front. T.J. Parker, Peter Woods, Peyton Page. These guys can get after it against this banged up Louisville offensive line. They rush four. Chuck finds a soft spot in the zone. Wide open is to Corey Brooks. A first down on third and 13. He picks up easily. First down yardage all the way down to the 30-yard line, a gain of 22. Looks like a little bit of a mix up in their underneath coverage. You had some guys playing zone under, or man-to-man -man underneath. They're playing zone in the back end, and it just leaves a void in about that 15 to 18-yard curl area for Ja'Cory Brooks, who's been on an absolute tear. You can see it here. Look at the huge hole on the second level. Again, a mix-up at the second level in terms of zone versus man. Guys not on the same page. Great start for Louisville. Now run it up the middle with Brown. Did the ball pop out? Players reacted as if it might have. As Peter Woods made the stop, it's a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. How about the confidence you think Louisville would have built for themselves last week? Coming from 20 to nothing down late in the second quarter at Boston College. It was the fourth biggest comeback in program history. They were down 10 in the fourth quarter. They had lost 47 consecutive games when trailing by 10 or more in the fourth quarter and came back and won. Swing pass. Bouncing off a tackler. And getting popped out, Khalil Barnes was there to make the stop on Brown. Again, you see just how quickly Tyler Shuck is making his decisions. He understands what he's up against up front. He understands that the pocket may be compromised with the power rushes that Clemson has. But as he told us, I'm as comfortable as I can be in this offense right now. I want Jeff to put the, off, to put the onus on me, head coach Jeff Brom, because he feels dialed in with the play calls where the ball needs to go and with this big play receiver. So now keep an eye, keep an eye on number one, Ja'Cory Brooks, keep an eye on 24, Amari Huggins-Bruce in the slot down here at the bottom. Another third down, eighth play of the drive. Flags down. This play blown dead at the line. It's going to be a false start. It's going to back Louisville up. False start. Offense number 24. Five-yard penalty. It's third down. So now it'll be third down and 11. This place is loud now. I mean, you have to manage the kind of noise and chaos that this venue presents. As you see Jeff Brom on your screen. Trying to give the play call to Tyler Shuck. I mean, they have great field position here. You want to stay in this field position. You want to get some points out of this drive. You want to start fast. That's something Louisville has struggled with. Now, who do they go to? Who's the go-to guy? Again, keep an eye on Huggins, Bruce, number 24, and one, Ja'Cory Brooks. Yeah, Death Valley's loud. Death Valley at night, definite. Wide receiver screen. Flags everywhere. Well short of the first down. So we'll have to check the penalty markers. Barnes and Terrell combine on the stop of Chris Bell.
And it's going to be against Louisville again. Illegal formation. Offense, five players in the backfield. Five-point penalty. It's third down. Now that gives Louisville another crack at it on third down, but that also pulls them back outside field goal range, so Dabo Sweeney takes the penalty. Right here is where you need. He needs to be up on the line. Five players in the backfield. You have it there. You see them. One, two, three. But look at that off the screen there. But just a little miscommunication in terms of where guys need to line up, who needs to be on the ball, off the ball. Don't get that squared away. Shot going to roll out. Redmond the tight end. Dragged down. Basically right back where they would have been had the last play stood. A gain of 13. Island Griffin made the stop. So here comes the field goal group as Brock Travelstead will try and give the Cardinals the early lead. It's just important to get some points on the board. Look, Louisville has been outscored 66 to 55 in the first quarter of this season. They've been playing from behind, playing with a deficit for so many of their games. It'd be nice for them to start off with points on the board. He misses it left. Um, taking a look here at the keys to the game, Louisville just had got off the field and didn't score first and didn't start fast. That's something that's not a good indicator of success for them. Communicate on de defense, limit the missed tackles. For Clemson, attack the middle of the field in the passing game and on defense, maximum pressure against this undermanned offensive line for Louisville and put as much pressure as possible on quarterback Tyler Shuck. If there were a couple of positives for Louisville, in spite of missing the field goal, they had a chance to start quickly and score first. And what do you think of the pass protection for Shuck, at least on the opening possession, as yeah. we've got a flag thrown here before Clemson can even get the first snap off? Yeah, it was mostly self game. Defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty. So Desmond Tell costs his team five. Yeah, self-inflicted wounds on the part of their offense. But this passing game, they've moved the ball efficiently against just about everybody when Tyler Shuck has been on. So you, that, that's a good thing for Jeff Robbins. You see him right there wearing the referees out. Klubnik out of the pocket on first and five and just throws it away. And these two teams, polar opposites of one another, playing into your key of Louisville's need to start fast, score first, because normally Clemson, at least in their league games, especially blowing teams out in the first quarter. Yeah, they sure have. And then a lot of it starts with the guy on your screen. But Kay Klubnik has just been on it this year. He's just been so much more comfortable. His production has been exactly what they're looking for. Swing pass, but well positioned. Antonio Williams, nowhere to go. Quincy Riley held the edge. He got some help from Antonio Watts as well as those two stay at home for a loss of three. What you're seeing is a much more simplified defensive scheme, a lot more zone, a lot more eyes on the quarterback, and then read the routes as they progress down the field. Not a whole lot of blitzes so far, not a whole lot of five and six man pressures. Just trying to keep it simple so these guys can play fast. And you see also, they're getting the calls from the sideline. No more coach to player helmet communication. They want to keep it simple and everyone Take responsibility. Four man rush on third down and eight. Clubbed it. Jump ball to the sideline. Broken up. It'll be another three and out. Forced by the Louisville defense. Tayon Holloway there to get another pass defense. Again, just good coverage down the field. Rushing with some lane integrity. You see the two interior rushers. And then you see Tayon Holloway just making the great pass break up against T.J. Moore. Got a good break on it. But again, there you see Ramon Purier just on the outside, rushing with lane integrity, making sure he can keep Kate Klubnik in the pocket. That's as good of a start as you could hope for for Louisville's defense. Aiden Swanson with a line drive. Huggins Bruce fields the charity hop but gets bottled up. Nowhere to go. Still good field position, though, for Louisville. They'll start at their own 37 the night game at Clemson. It is an all-day party outside Death Valley, and then the student section fills up the Taco Bell Live Ma student section. All season long, student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live Ma student section of the year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. 
Halloween a couple days ago. Still alive tonight, though, here at Clemson, certainly in that student section on the hill when the team runs right through the students onto the field. It's a great scene. And now Tyler Shuck started at his own 38-yard line, opening possession, now at their own 37-yard line, a trick play, a reverse. And getting free is Bell. Down the sideline, gets a block. Oh, the reverse works to perfection all the way down to the red zone before Khalil Barnes finally brings him down. Just look at the block of the quarterback, Tyler Shuck, here on the end. He just occupies T.J. Parker just long enough <laughs> for Chris Bell to really speed it up and get out there on the perimeter. And Chris Bell has looked fantastic over the past couple of weeks. Chris Bell for 47, and now Redmond. He's down to the 10-yard line. He's got another six. What you love is the pace and the tempo, Bob, that they're going at. And again, this is something that the quarterback asked for. He thought it would help him. He obviously thinks it will tire out the pass rush for Clemson and keep them on their heels. One on one. And losing his footing trying to turn upfield was Shakori Brooks. As he was out there against Avion Terrell. You're seeing Avion Terrell. It looks like he is shadowing Ja'Cory Brooks, who's averaging over 18 yards per reception this year. And Avion Terrell, you see him there on your screen. His brother A.J. Terrell, also a Clemson alum. Dabo just gushes over Terrell's physical upside and his ability to cover one-on-one. -on -one. It's good on good out here right now. This Louisville offense can put the ball in the air with the best of them in college football. And the Clemson secondary is going to have to be on it. Losing the footing for Ja'Cory Brooks. Brought him up just short of the first down. The play clock's down to two, and they were still in the huddle trying to change the personnel. Out, out. Louisville, their first, 30 seconds. So they spend a timeout here. Timeout on the field. With just under five minutes to go in the first quarter and discuss a very important play. Third down and one, just outside the six-yard line of Clemson when we come back. Third down and one in the red zone. What are you calling? Well, I'm throwing it right now. Tyler Shuck has been on fire. And Jack Brom usually dials up some good key breakers down here and some tendency breakers and goes to people you wouldn't expect him to. Let's we'll see what he's got. He's got Donald Chaney in the backfield, the 220-pound running back, and all the tight ends on the field as well. And now it is third down and six. Michael Gonzalez will be called for a false start. So wipe away that whole sideline conversation. Now the whole play calling situation changes, you would think, unless it was disconcerting signals on the Louisville side pointing at Clemson. Delay of game. Deep wow, there you go. Disconcerting signals, number 19. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. So that gives them a first down. They don't even have to run a play. First and goal. They called that on DeMonte Capehart, number 19, who's been a fantastic player for them. You see him right here in the middle of the screen. You can't intentionally try to draw offensive linemen off sides using disconcerting signals, whether that's with your voice, quick movements, something to deceive the offensive line and make them jump. They really tried to crack down on it. Now you get Louisville a fresh set of downs. Mark Redman, Nate Kariski, both tight ends on the field. And they're going to roll out off of play action. And dirting the ball is Shuck, as that was well diagnosed by the Louisville defense. Basically the same kind of action they tried to use last week against BC. They're trying to get it to Nate Kariski, who had caught two, two passes last week for two touchdowns down on the goal line. Clemson's defense didn't fall for the play action fake. And Shuck had to just live to fight another day. Second down and goal at the three. See, with the offensive line and some of the deficiencies that they have, do you really want to try and run it in against this front? Play action again. Shuck heaves it out of the back of the end zone. Three tight ends on the field, and Cheney out there as well. Again, they go play action to try and fool Clemson. And again, Clemson doesn't take the bait. And you're going to see T.J. Parker coming off the top of your screen. Number three, you see him right there. 
making sure you take care of TJ, who is the number one pass rusher for this Clemson defense right now, leading the team with five sacks. You got to make sure you know where he is. Keep an eye on number 11, Peter Woods. All 315 pounds of him. He can move around like a small man. Chuck back in the end zone looking for a crosser and can't find Bell. Jaden Lucas in coverage. So after all that, it will be the Cardinals trying to break the ice with another field goal attempt. You see Jaden Lucas coming to your screen here as Tyler Shuck is looking to try and get this ball along the back end line. Jaden Lucas with the nice coverage. After a miss from 40, Trevelstead will try from only 21. And this time he knocks it through. So Louisville scores first. But you have to think Jeff Brom is on the sideline knowing they need sevens and not threes to beat Clemson on the road. Yeah, but you, you know, if you want to be optimistic about it, and you're right, they do need to score touchdowns and not kick field goals. You like how your defense has looked so far in terms of how it has played. Nice, fundamentally sound defense. You know you can throw the football. You throw the football against everyone, and you're moving the football up and down the field. You just got to be efficient in the red zone and not shoot yourself in the foot. And if you're Clemson right now, you're, you're thinking, look, we got to get this thing going here. As you take a look at the ACC standings, I mean, Miami just put on an absolute offensive clinic today. SMU and Pitt battling out right now as we speak. But if you're Dabo and you're Garrett Riley, the offensive coordinator for Clemson, you want to get this thing cranked up. You want to get some first downs and start moving this football down the field. And that probably means get Phil Moffa going. You got to get the run game going, and everything works off of it. It'll be a touchback through the back of the end zone. Our first opportunity to check in with Matt Barrett. Gentlemen, good evening. Happy College Football Saturday prime time. Time now for our Chick-fil-A moves on the field. Look, Vegas knew this was going to be something. Because AM was only installed as a two and a half point favorite, and Gamecocks of South Carolina get out to an early 7 0 lead. Lenora Sellers keeps it himself. And this was just moments ago. AM went for it on fourth down, deep in their own territory, didn't get it. Cocky takes advantage up 14 0. Wow. I'll well, keep our eyes on that game as things could change all so quickly in terms of the playoff predictor based on the outcome of that one as Phil Maffa picks up a couple Juan Clark the tackle for Louisville and Phil Maffa 26 career rushing TDs goes every bit of 230 and is a downhill hammer they've got to get establish that run game Klubnik lobs one up the seam into double coverage and overthrows the freshman Brian Wesco. So Clemson is a third and eight away from starting the game off with three consecutive three and outs. Well, here you're going to see Brian Wesco going up against Louisville's best defender by far, Quincy Riley. And you see him just playing outside leverage, high on the upfield shoulder. He's got a safety in the middle of the field. Perfect position. Quincy Riley is a story now. And he is going to be someone you're going to see them move him all over the field. He's almost like the fireman. They'll move him around to put out the fires. Whoever's hot, they're going to put number three on him. Here comes a blitz. Lubnick to the sideline. Climbing the ladder. And forward progress, it looks like, will give. Clemson the first down as that time Wesco is able to haul it in. That is a nice route by the freshman. Again, going up against Quincy Riley using that long catch radius. Maffa up the middle, dragging tacklers. Eight yards. Now Garrett Riley says, hey, let's speed it up here a little bit as well. Let's get into some rhythm. Let's start ripping off some plays. Let's see if we can establish some kind of momentum. Wide receiver screen. Rally Louisville. Quincy Riley read that immediately and made first contact on Antonio Williams. It's 
Trying to establish a little bit of momentum here. Now try and slow it down. Make sure that they have the call and they're on the same page. Who they want to go to. Antonio Williams on your screen. That's the playmaker. That's the guy that they want to get the ball to. They think he is absolutely dynamic. We get playing a little man-to-man -man coverage. Four-man rush. It gets through. Lubnick on his horse. Tries to buy time. Right at the first down line to gain. If it's complete, it is, but it's short. Wesco is brought down. He couldn't fight his way past Corey Thornton. At least not for enough. So now it's fourth down. And a half yard for Clemson inside their own 45-yard line. And they're going to bring in some large bodies hey, to sure. go for this. Did you see big number 11 coming in? Peter Woods, 19, DeMonte Capehart. You're talking about 315, 315. There's are some big boys in there right now. They hand it to Mappa. And he's got it. You see Mappa just running, just Time following. For an injury to a defensive player. Injured Louisville player. And so while we have an injury timeout, we have a quick word from Verbo. Defenses so far have been stingy, and that really showed in the. Done. Look, if you want a house without a host, you should have booked a Verbo. Like I was saying, both teams have really good defenses, and it really showed in the second half. As the Louisville training staff surrounds the injured player, haven't been able to get a look yet at which Louisville defender this is. But boy, you bring in those big bodies if you're Clemson, and that is tough to defend, as that is Benjamin Perry, one of the linebackers for the Cardinals, who was injured. So while they continue to look at Benjamin Perry, we'll check in with Matt. Okay, Bob, right back out to you in a moment. We get to our All-State check-in. The big one in the ACC, SMU Pitt. Pony Express strikes first. 7 nothing early first quarter in that one. All right, Matt, thanks very much. So, Clemson and Louisville. Bob Shoes and Louis Riddick. And Chris Budden as Louisville with three losses this season, all to teams that were ranked at the time that the Cardinals lost to them and all in close games. And they're in another close one to start. Three nothing. They've got the lead on Clemson. Again, Clemson needs this win. 42% chance to make the playoff with it. And all the way down to single digits, according to our All-State playoff predictor, were they to lose it. And again, those numbers will change throughout the night as we're constantly running simulations based on the outcomes of games. Right now, South Carolina with a 14 to nothing lead on Texas A&M, a top 10 team. And we will try and steady Lewis's nerves as the night goes on if SMU continues to lead Pitt. <laughs> but this is also concerning here for Benjamin Perry because they have gotten him at least in a sitting position but they still have not been able to get him up on his feet. Dabo Sweeney's even out of the field concerned about the condition of Benjamin Perry. Now Jeff Brahms all the way across the field as well.
You're just going to see Benjamin Perry just flowing to the football, working his way through traffic, kind of just rolls over top of the pile. And you're going to see him kind of get up and then just kind of go back down to a knee. You see it right here. Hard to tell exactly what happened. So again, not completely sure what the condition is for Benjamin Perry that's causing such the delay. Makes it even more concerning as to why they have not been able to get him all the way off. We are back, and they have been able to stabilize the neck, it looks like, of Benjamin Perry. And they are very gently walking him off the field. We were told a moment ago that they may even be bringing a cart out to bring him back, possibly to an ambulance. But it is at least good to see that they are able to get him upright and bring him off the field. That was a strange and what, as time kept passing, Lewis became a scarier yeah. situation for that young man. Sure is. There's just no obvious indicators on tape as to what happened to him. Now it's up to the medical department to take good care of it. Now we will try and get a report to you on Benjamin Perry when we can. So after the fourth down conversion, the drive resumes for Clemson near midfield. Another blitz. That slant on top for T.J. Moore. MJ Griffin may have saved a touchdown. He was the last line of defense, limiting the gain to 22. You see Ron English bringing five, trying to get some pressure on Cade Klubnik. T.J. Moore just runs a great route against Quincy Riley, beats him inside. Klubnik hits him in stride. Play action, Klubnik. Quarterback run. Boy, he pays a price, but he picks up six. He sure did. The safety to Marion McDonald put a nice hit on him. Was able to square him up. And now Quincy Riley is down. Now the crowd booing, but that is the last player Absolutely. that Louisville wants to see hurt and would want off the field against the aerial attack of Clemson. And sure, as soon as the play was over, Quincy Riley was putting his hand up in the air. Regardless of what was happening, you know, as far as the tempo of Clemson, you could tell right away cramps or something was getting to him. He grabbed his hamstrings immediately. And he is a fantastic player, 14 career interceptions, a bona fide day one candidate to be selected at cornerback in the NFL draft. And they need him against this high powered passing attack. They have missed his presence. He's gotten healthy now. Showed what he's made of last week against against Boston College. They need to keep. And Quincy Riley able to walk off the field. He's walking like someone who those hamstrings and calves are cramping up. That body posture looks all too familiar. If you're Clemson right now, you're rolling. Your passing game starting to get going. Phil Moffa's getting rolling a little bit. You're seeing Cade run the football some. Play action, 10 play of this drive. Full shot. A little button hook down to about the 10 yard line. TJ Moore again in front of Tavion Nicholson to the 12. We know that Clemson just cranks out wide receivers, and they've got two more young ones in number one, TJ Moore, and then 12, Brian Wesco Jr. These two young guys have really taken off and just added to what Antonio Williams already brings to the table. We haven't even talked about the tight ends yet. Brennan Stuhl and Pat Henry, they can go as well. Swing pass out to Antonio Williams to the pylon. Touchdown. Safety MJ Griffin, as you see him, he just gets that left foot inside the pylon, breaks the plane. So after two, three and outs for Clemson to start on offense, an 11 play 75 yard touchdown drive 
And Lewis, now the Clemson offense looked like it got some rhythm to it. Sure does. You can see Antonio Williams here against the safety who was backed off at about nine yards and MJ Griffin immediately Kate Klubnick is going to identify that and say look that's exactly what we want we can tell the safety has given him some room because he's scared of his speed especially down here where everything happens fast Griffin tries to drive on it and then kind of hesitates at the point of attack where he should have just shot for the legs and tried to get him down on the ground because as soon as you hesitate against a guy like Antonio Williams it's over it's absolutely over. You can see he's as quick as a video game. The club says that's what we're talking about. They upped the tempo, got into a rhythm, started completing some passes. These young wide receivers got going. And now if you're Tyler Shuck, you're, you're saying, hey, look, we have to answer. We got to start scoring touchdowns, all right? As we talked about already, Bob, I mean, threes aren't going to get it against this offense. You've got to match them score for score. Clemson averaging 42 per game. And since their opening loss to Georgia, nearly 49 per game. As to Corey Brooks, he's going to run it out from deep in the end zone. And gets spun down just across the 20 yard line. Let's go back to Matt. Big game, Bob, and it's time for your AT&T Multiview, which is keeping fans connected. A look at the night window across the country. Big 12, TCU Baylor 7-0 South Carolina. Again, surprising Texas A&M early on ABC. SMU holding on to that 7-0 lead over Pitt. And Kentucky up early on 7th ranked Tennessee on SEC Network. All right, Matt, thanks very much. We have been instructed, Matt, by the way, no more SMU Pitt cut-ins unless it is good news about Pitt, at least on this show. Two yards. Camonte Capehart there to wrap up Brown, and that will take us to the end of the first quarter. Clemson, a long... Well, offensively, what do you need on this drive to have it result in a touchdown? Well, we got to keep executing. We got to, we got to, uh, you know, when we get in the red zone. We got to score points. If we don't score points. We're not going to win. So we just got to be better, more efficient. Uh, but we got to score when we get close. Appreciate it. Echoing Lewis, what we talked about. They need sevens and not threes ultimately because they know even if they play well defensively, Clemson's going to score their points. Yeah, the red zone is just the most critical, critical area on the football field for an offense. They can move it. They can throw it as well as anybody. Got to get inside the red zone and get some touchdowns. Start of the second quarter. Blitz coming for Clemson. Flags down as Shuck escapes the pocket and throws it away. Illegal shift. Offense number 88 and 25 both moving and never been set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty. It's second down. In the second. Correction. Clemson will decline the penalty. It's third down. Self inflicted wounds. You're backed up in your own territory on the road. Hostile environment. A place you've never won. Just can't afford to have those kind of critical errors. Now you're in third and long. Now the crowd noise is really going to ramp up. And now what does Wes Goodwin do, the defensive coordinator for Clemson? Does he send five? Does he just rush and play coverage? They're sending. Five. Yeah, they're sending pressure. And shot. Long throw to the outside. He had missed on four in a row until that one to Chris Bell. What a third down conversion for Louisville. Oh, did they need that a gain of 14? He let this ball go way before Bell became out of the break. He's, he knew here, came, here comes the rush. I have to get this ball out of my hands. Chris Bell going high to make the catch. Shock on a slant. Bobbles incomplete. He tried to squeeze one into a tight window to Bell and look catchable. He was not able to hold on. As Jay Lucas and Wade Wood as we're on either side of Chris Bell. has some receivers that can really go on the outside lane and just rip you with explosive plays. Flags down. This play blown dead at the line. This will be a false start. False start. Offense number 83. Five yard penalty. Second down. So that's Mark Redmond, the tight end. That'll bring him off the field. 
you've got to be efficient. You've got to be able to handle the noise. This place can become deafening, and they can really disorient you as an offense. Shot sidearms one. High and incomplete. Hey, Kariski trying to climb the ladder and couldn't haul that one in. Again, this is a team that lost their most dangerous weapon at tight end in Jamari Johnson for the season. He hurt his ankle against Miami. So Redmond, he has had his role expand over the last four games. And Kariski kind of came out of nowhere against Boston College with a couple of touchdown catches last week. But now it's third down. 15. How do this figure? How do they want to manage this down? Do you have a third and 15 call on your play sheet? Play sheet? Probably not. You just got to figure out how you want to make sure you don't commit any critical errors here. Take care of the football. Incomplete. Ja'Cory Brooks, the intended receiver. That was Woodass running with it. That's some talent for a linebacker who actually began his career as a safety. Made his first start as a safety in the ECC championship game yeah, for the see, Clemson defense. You see Woodass in the middle of your screen just pick, pick up that deep over that Ja'Cory Brooks is, is running. Woodass is such a versatile player at the second level. He can do a lot of things that safeties do, which makes him all the more valuable. Bit of a shanked punt, but it takes a roll for Louisville. All the way down to about the 25-yard line. 45-yard punt for Carter Schwartz. Welcome back, Louisville defensive player Benjamin Perry, who was injured in the first quarter, was just taken off on a stretcher and then onto the medical cart and is being taken right now into an ambulance where they will take him to a local hospital. There is no exact information from the school on what the injury is. When he came off in the stretcher, he was wearing a neck brace and strapped in. He was alert and talking. As soon as I get more information, I will let you guys know. Uh, please do. As our thoughts and prayers, certainly with Benjamin Perry, and he recovers very quickly. On the move, Klubnik faked a little check down to Phil Maffa, and then picks up six on the scramble. D'Angelo Hutchinson came up to make the tackle, but it'll be second down and four for Clemson. Again, coming off on 11 play touchdown drive the last time they had it to take the lead. And there you see an underrated part of Cade Klubnik's game. Something that Dabo Sweeney told us that he told him, like, look, when it's there, take off and run. Don't sit there in the pocket if you don't need to. You have legs, use them. You're a good scrambler. There he goes again. Great ball for Klubnik. Boy, he doesn't slide. Gets picked up and tossed back. And the crowd not a fan of Tamari McDonald launching the quarterback backwards. Gain of nine. When you see Klubnik again. He pulls it and decides to take his on on his own. Out on the edge. To Mario McDonald, the crowd here not happy about how he decided to finish off that tackle. But again, this is an underrated part of his game. Once he starts using this in concert with his ability to make great decisions, throw the football with accuracy, is this going to enhance his overall game? And Dabo Sweeney screaming for a flag as well. Nothing comes out. Club McKinn as he throws, still rifles one to the sideline on time to Brian Wesco. Boy, he is a tough kid playing quarterback, is Kate Klubnik. He took a shot and still a nine-yard completion. But how about this movement in the pocket? Eyes down the field, two hands on the ball. You see him just using his feet to buy some time, navigate the pocket, and then find the freshman, Bryant Wesco. And just the eyes never come down. He's consi consistently looking down the field, trying to find that open target. Maffa has a first down. But the thing about Kate is you don't want him taking too many shots from guys like Ashton Gelati, who was a fantastic pass rusher for Louisville. But man, just his pocket presence, his maturity, and his development from last year to this year, and you're just seeing it bear out in the statistics he has put up so far this year. Biggest steps you've seen him take from last year to this year. It's really about decision making and the ball coming out of his hands with great anticipation. He's throwing this ball early and often to these young wide receivers and putting it right where it needs to be put. Eventually comes back and finds Brenningstuhl. 
Eyes stay downfield. At the last second, he unloads for seven. And how about this offensive line? How about the protection that they're giving him right now? When you can sit back there and pat the ball multiple times and just hop around. He follows Maffa on a little zone read. And Klubnik picks up two. It'll be third down and one. We spent time talking to Kate Klubnik and Phil Maffa this week. Or could you imagine two players that have more pride in the program that they play for than those two specifically? Yeah, really, in a phrase, they said, look, we love it here. We love it at Clemson. They take a lot of pride in the standard that they're trying to live up to and one that's been established by Dabo Sweeney. Rolling on the field as the ball carrier was down short of the line of the game. It's third down. And the two teams headed to the respective sidelines as if there was going to be a review. I don't think replay is going to get involved. It certainly looked like the spot was accurate. So third down and one. Clemson puts their offense right back out on the field. Maffa. Extra effort. I have to check the spot. It looks like that second push got him the first down. And it did. And you know, that lopsided loss the start of the season to Georgia Lewis, it kind of brought Dabo Sweeney and Clemson to the fore as a bit of a pinata, for they're the team that won't go into the transfer portal. He's holier than thou. It's all about Clemson. But yeah. culture matters. And when you talk to these players, I mean, it is something they really embrace. It sure is. You saw the graphic on your screen in terms of the number of transfers that both of these teams have. Lovnick down the sideline, and that time, Wesco became a defensive back as he knocked it away from Corey Thornton. But they really do believe, though, here, and Corey Thornton is one of those kind of guys, or rather, T rather Brian Wesco is one of those kind of guys, along with T.J. Moore, these young freshmen that they have on this football team. They believe in really recruiting and developing. That's what they are. And then they reward the players here that prove to be productive in their system and prove to be the kind of student athletes they want them to be. That's where their NIL money goes. They don't try to go outside for the quick fix. Maffa is brought down near the line of scrimmage. Gain of a couple. Jared Dawson. Yeah, Kate Klubnick said, I'm the perfect example. He said, you know, the way I played last year, Coach Sweeney could have come to me and said, you know what, I'm going to go outside, I'm going to get a different quarterback. He said, I'm not doing that. You are my guy. I brought you here for a reason, and we're going to develop you, and we're going to improve you, and I'm sticking with you. And that message trickles through the whole program. Third down and eight. Blitz coming. It's picked up. Ball batted in the air, and it falls into the arms uh, one of the offensive linemen, it would appear. Yep, Tristan Lee ends up with the ball in his arms. The left tackle, but well behind the line of scrimmage, it'll be fourth down. Yeah, you see he's just trying to hit a quick slant right here on Antonio Williams. And linebacker Antonio Watts able to time the pass perfectly and get his left hand up in the air. You're going to see it on your screen. You see the left arm of Antonio Watts tip the ball up in the air, and then Tristan Lee. That's a good job on the part of Louisville of getting off the field, making the plays that need to be made in order to get their offense back on the field and see if they can get some points against a Clemson offense that has started to heat up. And over end punt for Swanson. Huggins Bruce with a fair catch inside the 10 yard line. Third. Now, two Clemson legends honored earlier tonight Taj Boyd and Sammy Watkins. Taj Boyd, 32 and 8 all time as a starter, and Sammy Watkins, a 2011 ACC Rookie of the Year. Of course, a Super Bowl champion with the Chiefs, finalist for the Bolitnikoff Award. So it was great to hear the crowd reaction for them. Let's go down to Chris. Important injury update. Bob, injured Louisville linebacker Benjamin Perry has been loaded up into an ambulance where he will go to Greenville, South Carolina to have an MRI. I also watched as he was able to talk to his mom on the phone. She's not here, but he was able to talk to her before he left. Okay, great. Any further information that you get, please keep us updated. First and 10 Louisville inside their own 10 yard line. And they'll run it and getting free is Brown. He's got breakaway speed with a stiff arm from his own eight yard line with a late flag thrown out of bounds contact as 
as well. He's out of bounds at the 31, a gain of 23, but they might be well out close to midfield if it's 15 Personal more. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, defense number 10, 15-yard penalty, an automatic first down. So Jaden Lucas tacks on 15 yards to the end of the run. It's just a well-blocked play, and then you see Jaden Lucas at the end just trying to get a hand on the dynamic Isaac Brown at the end. You just got to try and push him out of bounds. You can't just grab him on the back of the jersey like this. It's a dangerous play. That's how players get hurt. Brown again to midfield and wrapped up by Wade Woodass. Now, the crowd, Lewis, was booing the call, I think because they saw a grab of the jersey. If you grab the nameplate of the jersey and make the act of pulling a player down, that counts as a horse collar tackle. Correct. It's the same rule. So although the crowd was booing, that action on the nameplate is the same as grabbing the collar itself. That looked like a good call. And as a result, Louisville in business at midfield. Play action, Chuck. He's gonna lob one to the sideline, hoping for a one-handed grab by Mark Redman. Now Louisville face with another third down. Barrett Carter was there in coverage. This is a great play, great reaction by Barrett Carter. As defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin continues to try and dial up the pressure and try and throw Tyler Shuck off of his rhythm because he's kind of settled in a bit. And now here you got third and long. What do you do? Do you want to play front and coverage? Do you want to try and heat him up? You got to make sure again, you got to take, take care of the usual suspects. Ja'Cory Brooks, number one, always know where he's at. Keep an eye on Amari Huggins, Bruce, 24 in the slot. Chuck has won for his last nine. He's going to take a shot for Brooks. Incomplete. Flag out. Avion Terrell can't believe it. The Clemson sideline can't believe it either. Pass interference. Defense number 20. 15 yard penalty. Automatic. First down. You're going to see Avion Terrell. This is good on good. Watch his right arm. Watch him right there. You see him pulling the jersey. He's holding the jersey as he's running down the field. You just can't do that. You can't impede the wide receiver by clearly grabbing his jersey, pulling it off of his shoulder pad. So you like that call? Yeah, look, I mean, I played the position. I've been out there. I know. Look, you grab a guy's shoulder pad and pull his jersey off as the ball's in the air, they're going to call you. Maybe on Terrell's good enough to not have to do that. This is a great matchup between him and Brooks. Four-man rush. Screen set up. Middle of the field. Getting free is Brown. Makes a move at the five-yard line, saving a touchdown was Woodass. Timeout for an injury to a defensive player. Trey Williams is hurt. They sprung Watson. It's a halfback middle screen. To Isaac Brown, and you get him, or Duke Watson, rather, you get him out in the open. They have got these two young freshman running backs that can really, really. Presented by IHG Hotels and Resorts. This is the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive game of the week. Trey Williams was able to trot off the field on his own, but he is in the injury tent. They're taking a look at him over on the sideline as we speak. First and goal, Louisville at the five yard line. Crowd still unhappy with the officials as they line up with the pistol. They give it to Watson. Lowers his shoulders and grinds out a yard or two. Bottom of the pile with Shelton Lewis. Cut him down just inside the five at the four. And now Lewis is hurt. Yeah. He came up and really supported the run hard. Timeout for an injury to a defensive player. Lots of injuries here in the first half for both teams. And you don't want to speculate again, but I mean that was a significant meeting in terms of contact there against Duke Watson as he came in and filled the hole. Looked like he was pointing at his left leg. It looks like that's where they're going to work. I don't know if this is another player that's cramping. They're looking at his knee. He kind of got bent up underneath the pile. Well, the college.
college basketball season tips off Monday on the ACC network with a triple header. The number six Notre Dame women's team will start us off at five Eastern against Mercyhurst. Then we'll have a men's doubleheader, number seven Duke against Maine. And we'll cap the night with number nine North Carolina hosting Elon. Opening night. ACC basketball on the ACC network. Keep our eyes on Shelton Lewis as he will have to be helped off the field, not putting any weight on that left leg. You're going to see him right there, right in the middle of your screen. You see, as the weight of all the defend, all the offensive and defensive players, his own teammate, come down on him, his knee gets buckled under. You just hope he's okay. So second down and goal at the four. And give credit to this Louisville offensive line, as beat up as it's been. It has really been protecting pretty well in this football game, creating some creases in the run game. And they had to find a way to get Tyler Shelton a little bit rattled. They fake the jet sweep to Brown, a little shovel pass. And he's got nowhere to go. Dragged down right at the five-yard line by Jaden Lucas. He stayed home on the speedy Isaac Brown. It'll be third down and goal. T.J. Parker played this perfectly on the edge. You see him just staying lateral, just mirroring Tyler Shuck. Put some indecisiveness and some indecision into his mind as far as do I keep this, do I go ahead and pitch it? Gave his defenders some time to come and rally to the football. Now here, you wind up heating up the quarterback. Do you send a blitz? You see defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin. What is he going to do? Is he going to play coverage? They only rush four. Shuck out of the pocket. He's going to run for it. Down! Tyler Shuck just absolutely scanning the field, making a great decision as far as no one's uncovering. The pass protection is good, but I have an escape route and use my athletic ability that many people underrate. He's someone who doesn't run the football very much, doesn't really break the pocket very much, and then just sells out for the touchdown. That's how you come up with six. That's the 11th rushing touchdown of Tyler Shuck's career, but that's his first rushing touchdown for Louisville. That's a memorable one. <laughs> Went right over the top of R.J. Mickens. It sure is. Just look at the protection up front here. Just look how solid it is. They got the double team to the left. And then he just finds an escape route. And this goes up and over the top of linebacker Barrett Carter. Again, look, he's just going through his progression. He goes from right to left. And continues and then just tucks the ball. Wow. Went over top of R.J. Mickens, rather. It wasn't Barrett Carter, but nevertheless, it's just a good decision on his part to not put the ball in harm's way. See if he can go ahead and pick up positive yardage in the best case scenario. Get it in the end zone for six. A seventh year senior. He has seen a lot. And his contemporaries, some of them have been in the NFL for a while. First of all, I'll have more on that in a moment. Let's see what Clemson can do before halftime. Jay Haynes from the goal line. Bounces around out to about the 18-yard line. Chris. Now he would take you through a little time capsule since Chuck was first in college football in 2018 in that class. Also, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Brock Purdy. And then conference realignment went wild. He was at Oregon when the Pac-12 was, you know, 12 teams, and now it's down to two. And at that time, Patrick Mahomes had started one regular season game. He's now started 121. My favorite quote was how NIL has changed. He said, when I first got to Eugene, I was driving my grandfather's old Lincoln. The parking lots look a little bit different now. Yeah, when you began your career as Justin Herbert's backup at Oregon, and you're still playing college football. Slant and complete from Klubnik. I mean, Justin Herbert's five years into the NFL. Tyler Shook's still at Louisville. Amazing. We, we had him 
Right as part of a call with the players this week with Louisville, he had to apologize because he was outrunning errands with his wife. <laughs> yeah. So he was a little Real late to the problems. call. Real right? world problems. Yeah, you don't, you don't normally hear that. Normally the guys kind of forget about the call because they were playing video games. No, Tyler Shuck was at Walmart with the missus. He got, he got sent out to, with the honey-do list. Super impressive young man who's really taking control of this offense, and he looks as poised as can be. Up the middle goes Moffa. Boss into the secondary. Dragon tacklers. Out to the 43. 24 yards for Moffa right up the middle. That's what Dabo wants to get going. You're going to see him. He's just going to come right off of the rear end of the center, right in the A gap, and get the ball north and south. He pinballs around for a couple more. As Mantell brings him down. Phil Maffa, another, another one of these impressive young men here at Clemson. Again, 26 career rushing touchdowns. Averaging 6.5 yards per carry coming into this game. You see there on your screen, four games with 100 plus rush yards. Once they get him going, the play action passing game, the RPO game, it all starts to roll off of Phil Maffa. There he goes again. He only had one 100 yard rushing game each of the last two years. So he has taken his game to a completely different level this year. It'll be third down and a long two close to three. He's got 53 yards in the first half now. They got a freshman, Jay Haynes, number 26, that Dabo gushed over as well, that they want to get some more touches to in the backfield, out of the backfield, because of his game-breaking ability as well, and to keep Phil Moffa fresh. But you can best believe they will ride number seven. Clubden. Finds a man in Wesco for a first down. Six yards, but a third down conversion for Louisville in plus territory. I mean, both of these quarterbacks are just so comfortable in their offenses as far as being able to get through two, three, four progressions and then deliver the football with accuracy. And the reason why these offensive lines giving them great protection, allowing them to sit back there, poised in the pocket, and just survey the field. Only 145 yards of offense, though, so far in the first half for Clemson. Lubnick. Pocket collapsing. Escape somehow. A Houdini. And the crowd loves that scrambling move by Clubman. Stan Paul Clark eventually brought him down, but that looked like a sack waiting to happen. Again, the protection is good initially. He can't find anybody open. You see there, he's just, he stays poised, keeps two hands on the football, escapes out to his left, and then again, Uses his legs just as Davo has been coaching him to all off season, all during the regular season. Do not limit yourself to just staying in the pocket. Get outside of it and use that athleticism. End around. Cole Turner. Ran a long way to pick up about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Tracked down by Gelati. How's the communication been, as best you can tell? For Louisville. Again, they've had communication problems on defense to the point they've eliminated the green dot. Exactly. They are they're going old school. They're communicating from the sideline as if helmet communication no longer exists. Well, look, they, they've obviously they've given up a few plays where they have kind of lost some one-on-one -on -one battles, but it hasn't been because of just blown coverages. And you see all the players looking to the sideline, looking to the coaches, signaling in the calls. And everybody seems to know where they need to be and what their responsibilities are. And that's butted down. They want to set up the tunnel screen. And Miles Chernigan was right this there at the two-minute timeout. Two minute timeout. Well diagnosed by Chernigan as we step aside. All right, Matty, inside of two minutes to go in the first half. And already an eight-play drive underway here for Clemson, but facing third down. Klubnik dropping. He wants a one-on-one. -on -one. And he drops it right down the chimney, but unable to hold on was the freshman T.J. Moore. Tayon Holloway there in coverage. That looked like about as good a throw as Klubnik could have put on T.J. Moore. It absolutely is. He has a great release. You see him there. He gives himself plenty of room on that slot fade. Drops it right into the basket. 
And all TJ needs to do is just really finish the play. So another freshman, Nolan Hooser. His whole family. Talk about a Clemson legacy. His mom, an All-American soccer player. His dad played baseball, and now he is the kicker. They can't convert. That's just a TJ Quinn gets through, and they've got a blocked field goal before halftime. Another blocked kick for the Louisville Cardinals. That's Cardinals. That's four on the season. They had three coming into this game as a team. It's something that they have really excelled at. Obviously, put a lot of emphasis on the game planning part. As far as trying to find some weaknesses that they can exploit, and you're going to see it here. That's just great execution on the part of T.J. Quinn, just rushing with, with power, getting that left hand up. That's a big-time, big-time play by the special teams unit. Fourth block kick of the season, and the second blocked field goal for Clemson. And great field position, and a jump cut for Brown, and a first down. And let's also remember, Louisville starts the third quarter with the ball. They won the toss and deferred. They've got two timeouts. They've got a minute 38 on the clock. A chance to put together back-to-back -to -back possessions. A lot could be determined in this possession in the first of the third quarter. Look at breaking tackles. There's the freshman. He is slippery. He is hard to find. And he continues just, to rack up yards. Just look at the offensive line. Look at how they're getting movement at the point of attack. Gonzalez, Nigra, just getting pushed inside on the defensive tackles, on the nose guards and the three techniques, and just creating seams for Isaac Brown to exploit with that tremendous acceleration and explosiveness that he has on the second level. This is not something you anticipated coming into this football game that you see the Clemson defensive front getting pushed around by an undermanned and injured offensive line for Louisville. Play action. Shot throws the out. Anticipation throw for Huggins Bruce, and that was slightly mistimed. It'll be second down and 10 from the 12. Again, down here in scoring territory. Putting the emphasis on scoring touchdowns over kicking field goals. Play selection becomes critical. Running the football is primary. That's what you want to do as an offense. You don't want to throw it because the windows are just so tight down here. And if you're Clemson, you've got to find a way to create a negative play here. Get some pressure on the quarterback. They're going to run it with Brown. Finds a crease down to the five-yard line. Wade Wood has made the stop. And if you're Louisville, let the clock run. Again, the running game is just really clicking right now. You see the tight ends. Mark Redman blocking on the edge. Isaac Brown is hurt. He is someone that play was stopped for an injury to an offensive player which qualifies for a 10 second runoff Clemson has declined the runoff and the clock will start on the snap please reset the clock to 105 so Isaac Brown who is certainly Thank in you. line to be freshman offensive player of the year is down as we take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Chick-fil-a Miami won a wild one against Duke you can see Ohio State survived against Penn State. So Penn State, the lone team to lose in the top five. And their woes continue against top five and top ten teams. And even for James Franklin, the woes continue when playing either Ohio State or Michigan in those monster Big Ten matchups. Right now, Tennessee trailing, as is Texas A&M. So we'll keep our eyes on those two SEC games. And... In this very game, just on the outside of the top 10, of course, we've got the 11th ranked team in Clemson, and they are trailing. One of the lone undefeated teams, along with Miami, SMU, and Pitt. Of course, SMU and Pitt playing each other, and that is all SMU right now. 
Is this high intrigue, high drama as we move here into these critical weeks of the season? That's good to see Isaac Brown able to walk off. It sure is. Look, that's someone that Jeff Brom has said. Look, he is critical to their football team. They're trying to keep him healthy, trying to keep him on the field, trying to maintain as the season gets long for the young freshman who has been just spectacular for this offense all season. So a monster play here. Third down and three at the five-yard line. They've got Keon Brown now in. The keeper for Shuck, looking for a second rushing touchdown. It looks like he is close, down at the one, but it is a first down with a minute to go in the half. What a great read on the part of Tyler Shuck. He sees T.J. Parker crash down the line of scrimmage, and then he just takes it and puts his head and shoulder down, tries to get in there. Quick snap, Neon Brown with a push at the goal line. He's in. It's just great blocking at the point of attack on the left side of the offensive line. Then you see the end man on the line, was, line of scrimmage, the tight end, Kariski, just getting push, allowing the runners and Keon Brown to just find a seam and exploit it and get in the end zone. You got to tip your cap to this offensive line again for Louisville. They have come out here playing shorthanded, just taking it to this Clemson defensive front. Louisville blocks a field goal, turns it into a touchdown at the opposite end of the field. They start the third quarter with the ball. They have a 10 point lead. Still time on the clock for Clemson, and they have their timeouts. On well, Tuesday, we'll have the exclusive reveal of this season's first college football playoff top 25 rankings presented by Allstate. Reese and the guys will break them down from top to bottom, as well as we'll have a live interview with committee chairman Ward Manuel, the Michigan Athletic Director, 7 Eastern on ESPN and the app. And again, as we get ready for those first college football playoff rankings release on Tuesday. The All-State playoff predict predictor as of right now has Clemson 42% in with a win in this game tonight and all the way down to 9% should they lose this game and they find themselves in a 10-point hole as Nick Keller will now kick it deep and he'll boom one through the back of the end zone. Again, fans, don't forget, you can go to pn.com slash Allstate Playoff Predictor, and you can check out your team's chances to make the college football playoff. And again, these numbers change constantly. The Allstate Playoff Predictor, as results come in, keeps on running all of the simulations. That's why at the start of the night, Clemson was 44% to make the playoff if they won this game. It's dropped a little bit based on other results because there have been some results that have factored into the formula. But first thing first for the Tigers. They need a comeback as Louisville has thrown a little monkey wrench into their hopes over the middle. A slam and a modest gain on first down to T.J. Moore. And a quick timeout called the first from the sideline by Dabo Sweeney. Timeout. Clemson, their first, 30 seconds. All right. Ten point lead for Louisville. Biggest adjustment that you feel like you need to see from Clemson. It should they score before halftime, but what, what's the speech in the halftime locker room? Look, I think it's about the trenches. Like, you have to figure out a way to slow down this Louisville offense right now because right now their offensive line, which you would have really would have thought was a weakness for Louisville coming into this game, considering all the players that they've lost, wouldn't be able to establish the line of scrimmage like they have. And they have. They've run the ball for well over 100 yards here in the first half. As a matter of fact, they've run for 133 to be exact. And you're going to have to challenge your defense. Look, you got to get some stops, and we got to get some pressure on this quarterback. And offensively, we're going to have to start pushing this ball down the field and making some chunk plays. Ludnick, swing pass. Mafa sprints to the sideline, picks up a first down, and stops the clock. Unless they marked him out a yard short. 
the opposite side of the field's moving the chains. But it looks like the official on the near side marked him a yard short of the line to gain. And now they got to move the chains all the way back. Because the down and distance marker group, the chain gang on the far side, just assumed he had picked it up. But it's third and one. At the 34-yard line. And that forces them to run for it. And that is indeed a first down. But again, we're down to 26 seconds to go, and they have to call a timeout here. Timeout. Clemson, their second. 30 seconds. So now they're only left with one remaining timeout before halftime. As we take a look at our drive recap, covered by Geico. And it began with a special teams impact play, Lewis. It sure did. T.J. Quinn on the field goal block. You can see in there coming off the right side of your screen. Again, that's the fourth block kick of the year for Louisville. And then it's just about this offense and the explosive component out of the backfield. And Isaac Brown, he's been doing it all year long. This offensive line just cap capturing the line of scrimmage. And then Keywan Brown just finishes off the drive with the tough off-tackle run. I mean, what more can you say? I mean, this game has gone exactly how for Louisville that they wanted it to go. Control the game on the ground, protect the quarterback, don't give up big plays on the defensive side. Klubnik trying to extend the play, and he is heading south. Now buys time. Fires one to the sideline, broken up. 15 seconds to go in the half. Brinningstool, the intended receiver. It's the coverage downfield. The man-to-man -man coverage by the second and third levels of Louisville's defense right now is exactly what defensive coordinator Ron English is looking for. Kate has to pull the ball down, buy some time, avoid the rush, and then try and make some off-schedule plays. It's just very difficult right now for them to establish a consistent rhythm offensively. Get credit to Louisville. Angelo Hutchinson was right there to knock it away from Brittingstool. Might have been the chunk play that they needed to get at least close to field goal range. They have one timeout left, but now we're down to nine seconds. Yeah, it's the perfect call and a great job by Kate Klubnik of just influencing the second level dropper to kind of get that ball in behind to Brinningstool. Just not able to connect. And it's just been a struggle for them so far today. It's been a struggle for them to keep the rhythm going consistently. is about as good a first half as Louisville ever could have played. There you see defensive coordinator Ron English on the sideline. They're going to call their final timeout here, I would assume, as Stilato is brought down in bounds. As the clock is down to one second. No, Dabo Sweeney says we're not even going to bother with a Hail Mary. Almost seven yards per play. And they haven't given up any sacks so far in the first half, which is another thing that you just wondered whether or not they'd be able to protect Tyler Shuck long enough for him to push the ball down the field. Not only have they protected him, not only has he pushed the ball down the field, he's turned into a threat running the football. So Clemson's really up against it here in the second half. And they go right back to Isaac Brown. This time, not much there. Corralled near the line of scrimmage by Peyton Page and T.J. Parker. Let's go down to Chris. Jeff Brown really pleased with how his defense has played in that first half. He said, I knew that we had this potential all season, but really playing sound right now, the key has been not allowing easy completions, not allowing guys to run wide open. He said, really also happy with how we played in this environment, but it'll be a long second half. Well, they find the tight end for a first down. Mark Redman is able to move the chains. And again, you see there on that quick passing game, you see how all five offensive linemen went low and cut the defensive front of the Clemson Tigers so Tyler Shuck could have a clear lane to throw that quick out. I mean, they're just executing flawlessly right now up front. Cutback lane into the secondary again. Wow. Kylan Griffin was finally the man to bring down Isaac Brown, but he keeps piling up the yards. Just look at the double team on DeMonte Capehart, number 19. He can't get off of it. Barrett Carter gets a bad read. He doesn't get over the top and fill downhill, and there's just, they're just gashing him up front. Now they flip a screen out. 
Ja'Cory Brooks has six more. Another tackle for Griffin. I mean, now they're up to 7.1 yards per play. That's just something that you can't have if you're Clemson's defense. Defense, And if you're Louisville right now, and if you're Jeff Brom and Brian Brom, the offensive coordinator, this is exactly what you want. Isaac Brown follows his blockers. Another first down. Ridden out of bounds by Wade Wood as, but in rhythm, this Louisville offense, seven more yards for Isaac Brown. And he's got 101 on the night. I mean, everyone's getting involved, Bob. You see the wide receivers coming in on this kind of, on this kind of crack action where the wide receivers come in and block support. You see the tight ends in particular. Mark Redman, Kariski sealing the edge. Again, the cut blocks work. And this time, shaking and baking is Amari Huggins-Bruce. And it looks like we've got another player down. Time out for an injury to a defensive player. DeMonte Capehart. So we will step aside as the training staff is out to look at DeMonte Capehart. Yeah, I mean, we're going to see him here. He's going to get, he's going to get hit by two offensive linemen. There, there, you're going to see the cut block get executed there, and then you're going to see an offensive line come in on that left knee and go right to the side of the knee. That's a very questionable-looking block and questionable-looking strategy. It's something that they employ. They don't do that in particular, but they, they've been cutting these, this defensive line in the three-step passing game all night long, and it's been effective. Chuck drops and heaves one to the back of the end zone. And it's one thing if you are cut by the player right in front of you. Right. It's another thing if you are engaged with the player right in front of you and someone else from the side Comes dives the side. at your knees. Yeah. Demonte Capehart was able to walk off on his own. Hopefully, so hopefully yeah. he'll be able to get back in That's the game. Right. right now he's in the injury tent. Second down and 10. And there is the run defense rising up. For Clemson, let's bring in Matt Austin. Has he got to look at that replay? And maybe he can help us out with the definition of whether or not that was a legal block or not, Matt. Yeah, I, it's a legal block because to be a chop block, it has to be a high, low, or a low, high combination. But in, anyways, these blocks, if you're blocking, if you're on the initial charge, then you can block low. And I think both of these blocks were on the initial charge. They were also both low. So, yes, that was a legal block. Wow. Third and 13. Chuck on the move. Gets to the edge, throws across his body, and it's dropped. Amari Huggins-Bruce probably would have been able to just back up for a first down. Instead, it is third down, or rather fourth down, and they'll have to try a field goal. And again, you're seeing Tyler Shuck's athletic ability, keeping his eyes down the field, and able to throw across his body and really throw a nice catchable pass for Huggins-Bruce. It's a missed opportunity. On well, the part of Louisville here again, though, they can tack on three. Take this lead to 13. Rebelstead from 42. Trying to add to the lead. He missed earlier from 40, knocked one in from short range. Now he's two for three. Come from behind to do exactly that as Jeff Brom coaching his 23rd game at Louisville. In the previous 22, Lewis, 11 of the 22 have been one-score games. I mean, he is used to coaching close games. His team is a two-score lead right now. But they're seven and four in those one-score games, two and three this year. And they just won another one-score game last week when they came from behind to beat Boston College. Can they hold on tonight? Yeah, now it's going to be up to the defense. Obviously, the offense has to keep being efficient, moving the football, controlling the clock, running it well up front. But now it's up to this defense. Can you keep Clemson on the ropes defensively? Keep a lid on the defense, not allow them to produce those plus 20-yard explosives in the passing game that they've been good at producing so far this year. That means good communication, rushing with lane integrity, make sure that Cade Klubnik doesn't get loose, Close down on the run. Just do what you did in the first half. You'll get a win. Now, it remains to be seen if they can do that. Little play action rollout here for Clubman. Chase to the sideline and runs out of bounds. No game. 
has simplifying the communication and simplifying the game plan for Louisville been the key? Is that the secret There's sauce no, why it's been so effective tonight? There's no question about it. That's probably like 70, 80 percent of their problem so far this year has been assignments, been busts. It's been guys not being on the same page. They have talented athletes at all three levels. They have a lot of transfers, especially in the secondary. They needed to get on the same page. Ron English needed to simplify things, and he has, and you're seeing the benefits of that now. Four-man rush gets home, and this time he can't escape. It's going to be third down and a mile. An eight-yard loss as Gelati and Garad combined to arrive at the quarterback. Just watch the pass rush off the edge. You're just going to cave the pocket. Just go with bull rush. Just put your helmet right in the chest of the offensive tackle and just push him back into the Gelati has that kind of combination, power and speed. There he just went with power. The two-handed bull rush against the left tackle, Tristan Lee. Coverage holds up in the back end. It all works together. Third down at 18. Antonio Williams circles in motion. Instead, it's a middle screen that's broken up. Jordan Garan, who got a half a sack on the second down play, just about had a pick on the third down play. And it's a three and out for Clemson. Down by two touchdowns. Just watch the awareness here and the instinctiveness of Jordan Garad. Watch as he's running this TT stunt inside, how he just gets his hand up in the air at the last minute. And he's thinking, look, I was about to go big man balling, as they say and have a pick six potentially as a defensive lineman. That's the great series for Louisville coming out of the half. Knuckleball punt. It rolls to Ja'Cory Brooks. Makes the first man miss. Flag down. He's loose. He's all the way to the end zone. He thinks he's got a touchdown, but it might be coming back. And we're going to get a block in the back. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 21, 10 yard penalty, first down, timeout. Correction, no timeout. And there you see it. You just gotta pull off on that case. Just run by, put your hands up in the air, but don't touch him in the back. And hopefully the returner will be able to make that first guy miss. Because if you're able to, you just see the dangerous open field running skills of a guy like Ja'Cory Brooks, who's been just a big playmaker for Louisville all season long. Isaac Brown. For about a yard. You know, the other thing that's certainly underrated in this game tonight we haven't talked about any turnovers. That has really been the bugaboo for Louisville this season. When they played clean, they've mostly been a winning team. When they've turned it over, they've killed themselves. As Shuck is well protected, floats one across the middle, and the catch is made for a first down by Ja'Cory Brooks. That was basically what Dabo Sweeney told us this week, right, Lewis? Yeah, absolutely. How dangerous they are when they play a turnover-free game. Exactly. I mean, we know that it really determines the success failure at all levels of football. And on top of it, they've kept Tyler Shuck clean, which is also a forecast of how the game is going to go for them so far this year. This offensive line has really stepped up to the challenge. And off to Brown. And Clemson has made a living taking the ball away as well. They have been even or plus in their last six games, all wins. They have at least one takeaway on defense in six consecutive games. But they haven't jarred one free tonight. And a 100-yard rushing night for Isaac Brown has been a big push for this offense. Broken tackle for Chris Bell. Fights his way to the 31-yard line before he stopped, but it's another Louisville first down. There you see the strength of a wide receiver that goes 6'2", 220. Just on the short little comeback, curl route on the outside, but then it's the yak. It's the yards after the catch, the run after the catch. It's just, you got to get guys like this on the ground. And Dabo talked about the fact that they have to tackle better. That's both in the run game and in the pass game. Now it's Duke Watson. Maybe a yard. Pulled down by R.J. Mickens. 
And this tempo is something that has really worked for Louisville tonight. Tyler Shuck asked for it. Jeff Brown has given it to him and trusting him that when he's at the line of scrimmage to get them in the right place. Shuck into the edge. Driven back. Well, as Gutierrez Hicks, Khalil Barnes made the stop. So here's a chance for the Clemson defense. Not quite, you would think, inside comfortable field goal range yet for Travelstead. And it's a third down and a long nine, close to 10. And Clemson needs to get off the field here. They need to really create a negative situation in terms of the play result. They just have not been able to get pressure on Tyler all night long. They rush four and right over the middle, short of the line to gain, is the tight end Mark Redman. Now what do you do if you're Louisville? You've got a fourth down and about one. And they're going to bring the field goal group out to try and make this a 16-point lead. And Redmond angry that he didn't get to the first down line again. Yeah. I think he thought he got there. But he's a yard short. Yeah, he thought he needed to really just turn and basically dive for it. Had he really tried to keep his head up and run for it, he had some space in that zone coverage right in the middle of the field. Travelstead from 40. Still a two-possession game, but it is now a 16-point lead for Louisville. Lots of time left, but the crowd at Death Valley is quiet. Our Clemson is one of four FBS teams with no starts this year by transfers, who are the other three. Well, the Naval Academies. I think it might be the three academies. I'm going to go Army, Navy, Air Force. <laughs> that would make sense to me. <laughs> right? I mean, who, who transfers into the Army? Who transfers to West Point or the Naval Academy or Air Force? That, that would be my guess. Transfer, no starts by Maybe Clemson's one of them. Am I jumping transfer. you? Clemson might be one of them. Take a All right. We're going to end the suspense and answer our AFLAC trivia question. The other three teams that don't have starts by transfers this season behind the side. There you go. It's all of them. There you go. Sense there a pattern go. there? So I'm sitting there going, it's Clemson to Clemson. It's one of the ones that they gave us anyway. <laughs> you didn't listen you to know, the you, uh, you know what, Tess? I'm sitting there thinking about the answer. And I'm also thinking about, look, what does Clemson, I'll tell you what, what does Clemson need to do to start moving this football? So pitch one to Mafa. He finds a crease. And he almost broke it. That was a good tackle by Antonio Watts. If he doesn't get the ankles of Phil Maffa, that's a lot more than five yards. It looked like he had an alley. If Louisville's going to sit in this too high scheme with two safeties back in order to protect against the explosive passing game, Phil Maffa has to make them pay. This offensive line has to make them pay. They're in the same look again pre-snap. Now here comes the safety walking down. Maffa. Close to a first down. Can you afford, if you're Clemson, to just stay in a conservative run game the rest of the way, needing no. two touchdowns and two twos no, you got just to, for a tie? Right. No, you, you've got to get the timely play action shot over the top. But if they're going to sit back and really protect the, the deep passing game, but look, there's some, there's some routes that you can run against a two-high scheme, obviously, to get some chunk plays, but they come with a a higher degree of risk. Phil Moffat just has to make them pay up front. Only one high safety here. On third down and short, Antonio Williams in motion. Dive ahead for Moffat and he's short. And now it's fourth down and one. But there's a lot of time left, but Clemson has nothing going right now. They're down by 16 with five and a half minutes to go in the third. Inside their own 35-yard line, they're going to go for it. This is a time for a guy like Jake Brinningstool. If you're going to throw the football, do you trust your offensive line to get some surge so you can just pick up this first and then get back to the passing game? Play clock at 10. Trying to get in the right play. Play clock down to five. Mafa. Matt and driven back. Louisville takes it away on downs inside the Clemson 35-yard line. Ramon Perrier and Jay Griffin. Wow.
that's just a fantastic play on the part of MJ Griffin. Just watch him here. Watch how he tracks the motion, and then on the snap, he just shoots the gap. And he just comes free and meets him a yard in the backfield, two yards in the backfield. Just a timely, smart, instinctive play on the part of the safety, MJ Griffin, to get Phil Moffa before he can get started. Toss, reverse, flea flicker. Shuck on the move. Slings it to the sideline, hoping for Redmond. And I don't think he got a foot down. So they try to dial up the trick play after the takeaway on downs. It'll be second down and 10. Louisville has never beaten Clemson. But at least some fans think it's a foregone conclusion already. Yeah, there's a lot of ball game left here. A lot of ball game left. And we know how explosive this offense can be. Clemson is 8-0 all time against Louisville. All of those meetings since Louisville joined the ACC. Chuck stumbles, steps up. He's going to run, and he will slide ahead for about a yard. Sammy Brown, freshman linebacker, forced him down, so it's third down and nine. This is a huge play, you would think, especially for the Clemson defense. Dealing here with sudden change, Lewis, can they get a stop? Most likely outside field goal range. Yeah, I think it's... it's it's even taken on more importance now in terms of like you can't just get stopped. You got to get some turnovers here, as you talked about, and because of the direct correlation it has to their success. They got to create some favorable field position for their offense. Somebody's got to make a big play. It looks like they're bringing an all out blitz. Here they come. Chuck, batted ball at the line, incomplete. Barrett Carter with a big fist pump. Part of that blitz package. Do you try a long field goal? Travelstead has a career-long yardage of 56 that he made at Notre Dame. He's got this range. And there you see Barrett Carter. He's coming in the B gap, timing it up perfectly. Defensive coordinator Wes Goodwin just selling out and saying, look, i got to try and make something happen. We just can't play coverage here. We've got to disrupt Tyler Shuck because he has just been needing us a lot. It's from 49, technically. But he's one for five this year from 50 plus. Does he have this one in him? Oh, this is online. And it's got plenty of distance. Boy, if you call that one from 50, he is now two for six this year from 50 plus. And that's a big three points for Louisville because that makes this a three score game. That is this huge for Louisville right now. And as you said, it makes it a three-point game and really forces Clemson's hand as far as how they really want to approach this now. Yes, the run game still can be sprinkled in, but this is now, this is about Cade Clubman. This is about the passing game. This is about pass protection. This is about taking some chances down the field to this fantastic group of wide receivers. And they're going to have to make some one-on-one -on -one plays, maybe in some contested environments that are going to have to be spectacular. And for Travelstead, really, that's only the third field goal of his career, basically from that distance or a little further. So you would have thought getting the stop right there for Clemson might have saved them three points. But he comes on and makes a clutch long-distance field goal. And that stretches the lead to three scores. Fair catch call at the goal line. So it will come out to the 25-yard line as we take a look at our playbook. Brought to you by Modelo. There you see it. I mean, Louisville just absolutely just winning at the line of scrimmage and producing explosive after explosive with this banged up offensive line. And you just see how hard the backs are running between the tackles. And Tyler Shuck, someone who has really dealt with a lot of injuries in his career. He's tried to remain a pocket passer who can throw outside the pocket, but really not taking off down the field and running. And you see there, 150, 157 yards. It's just been a dominant performance up front for the offensive line. Lubnick scrambles for about two, maybe three yards. Well, to this point, Clemson has 182 yards. Now, 181 yards of total offense. 
Louisville has 160 rushing yards. So Louisville has run for almost as many yards as Clemson has total yards. You never would have seen that coming. But the execution on the part of Louisville's pass defense has been spectacular. Hoffa breaks a tackle and picks up a first down. Antoine Clark eventually brought him down, but Phil Maffa picks up 10. But the run game is there in this too high safety look in the white box. They can run the football, but can they get the chunk plays necessary? They're going to have to throw. Rudnick looking downfield. Instead comes back to the sideline, a 50-50 ball. Brinning stool. Fights for it. The officials come together. A flag throw. Did Brinningstool go out of bounds and come back in? It might be illegal touching. You can see one of the officials missing his hat. And normally they throw that when a player goes out and then comes back in. Bob, that's exactly illegal what touching. happened. Offense number nine went out of bounds and came back in bounds. He was the first to touch the ball. Ball be placed in the previous spot. Loss of down. Second down. So it's basically just an incomplete pass after all is said and done. Yeah, as he's working back downhill, you're going to see his left foot. He just kind of loses track of where he is at. You're going to see him right here. Just watch his left foot as he's starting to work back downhill. Right there, he steps out of bounds. Now it's second down and 10. Long throw, down and out for Antonio Williams. But if you're offensive coordinator Garrett Riley, you're going to have to dial up some two high safety beaters as far as attacking, you know, maybe the curl flat droppers in this underneath coverage with these two high safeties, getting some of your best wide receivers up on these safeties in one on one situations. That means maybe a guy like Antonio Williams, who you see on your screen, move him inside, see if you can get him loose down the middle of the field and get him in a one on one situation against one of these safeties. Is he worried that his pass protection won't hold up long enough to allow those routes to develop? I think the pass protection is good enough. They just got to get the right play call. There's a slam. And it looked for the moment as if Antonio Williams had the first down, and then he retreated a bit, and he's short. It's going to be fourth and one. It looked as if when he first made the catch, if he just would have moved forward and dove, he had the first down. But on his own, he went back to the 41-yard line. So now Clemson in the same spot in their last drive. They went for it and got stopped. And the play clock's we winding down. That the ball carrier was short of the line to gain is under further review. And now they're going to review whether or not they spotted the ball correctly. Uh, if he's contacted, it's forward progress. That's a judgment call. And they can review that when the line to gain is at issue. But if he goes back on his own, I don't know, Lewis, you, you be the judge. So you see Antonio coming across the field. I think the ball. We reached the ball out. Needed to get it to the 42-yard line. It's close. See there, he just puts his foot in the ground. He's trying to make. He retreated a bit, but then reached the ball out to the 42-yard line. So they may After move the ball review, forward. The ball carrier made the line to gain. Yeah. It's first down. Now, I think they got it right. And he reached the ball out. And so now that is a first down for Clemson. That's a big call. Sure is. That's a great individual effort on the part of Antonio, having awareness as to where he needed to get to. Staying up, keeping his knees off the ground. He's going to have to give them a spark on the outside. He's their best wide receiver, the most dynamic offensive player on the perimeter. Garrett Riley has to move him around and get him free. Try to keep him away from Quincy Riley. And get him some one-on-ones against these safeties. down and more 14 maybe 15 yards for Maffa D'Angelo Hutchinson made the stop as we're coming up on a minute 10 to go in the third Louisville starting it started in a too high look came down brought pressure safety came down in the box because of that zone read action it held him just long enough for Maffa to get out, out there on the perimeter and pick up big yardage Lutman, quarterback run to the 32-yard line. He's got seven. T.J. Quinn brought him down. Garrett Riley trying to stay patient, given what 
Louisville's defending them with and utilizing the run game, trying to take advantage of these light boxes and make them pay. But they have got to pick up their tempo. They've got to get some big chunk plays in here as well. And the crowd getting antsy as well because they want Clemson to play with a little bit more of a sense of urgency as well. 23 seconds to go in the quarter. Incomplete. Hoping for Troy Stellato. Antonio Watts undercut the route and tipped it. It's just a fantastic read on the part of Antonio Watts. You're seeing it right there. Cade never takes his eyes off of Stellato, so all he needs to do is just put his foot in the ground and, and break with force. You make that pick and return it for six, and you'll see more fans start filing out of this stadium. That's the sixth pass broken up by the Louisville defense. Might have a one-on-one -on -one situation down here at the bottom of the screen with T.J. Moore. They set him in motion. They run it instead. Bouncing it to the outside is Mappa with a stiff off. First down. To the 21-yard line. M.J. Griffin bumped him out. That should take us to the end of the third quarter. So Clemson will try to mount the four. Coach, you've been able to move the ball on this series. What do you need to be able to punch it in the end zone? We've got to just keep doing what we're doing. We found, found a little something in the run game right here, so we've got to keep leaning on the basics. You know, we've just not been able to get out of our own way, but hey, we've got a big fourth quarter. It's not over. We've got to, we've got to punch it in right here. Okay. And we start the fourth quarter as Dabo Sweeney's team knocking on the door of the red zone, but they need points in bunches. Trailing Louisville 26 to 7. On a march here, ninth play of the drive. And Phil Moffa breaking tackles. Down inside the 15 yard line to the 11. First down. And you see Clemson. big Phil Moffa averaging almost four yards of yardage after contact per rush heading into this game. You just see how powerful he is in his lower body, just breaking tackles, fighting for every yard. They're going to need him to be big for the rest of this game. 100-yard rushing game number five on the season for Maffa. They go to him again. To the 10-yard line, only a yard. And again, this is a three-score game, and that's only if Louisville doesn't score another point. That's right. And already a minute gone by here in the fourth quarter. So you're going to start again to hear this crowd urge this Clemson team to pick up the tempo. Again, here they come. Who are your best playmakers? Again, we're going to continue to beat the drum for a guy like Antonio Williams. You have to find a way to scheme him open. Get him some free releases off the ball and get him in a favorable one-on-one. -on -one. Here you see him at the number three in the trips. You see him inside. Now motion across the formation. Blitz coming. Plumnick finds the crosser. Antonio Williams cut back. Only to about the seven-yard line. Like Maybe on Nicholson stayed home. Like the idea, like the thought process here of Garrett Riley. And now if you're Ron English for Louisville, you're saying, hey, look, let's make sure we take care of zero. They've got a lot of size on the field at wide receiver on the outside. So guys who can go up and jump ball situations, you got to be strong at the catch point. They can get a first down inside the one. Lovnick. Flag down. Into the end zone. Tipped away and incomplete. Tavion Nicholson deflects the pass. And now what do you do if you're Louisville? It's a holding penalty, it looks like. I think you're going to get holding. Offense number 71. Penalty is declined. It's fourth down. They decline the penalty. So on fourth down, at some point, a field goal does factor into the math. And that means Dabo Sweeney, rather than going for it on fourth down from the Seven and a half yard line. He's going to send the field goal group out here and have Nolan Hooser make this a two score game again. But you're still going to need two touchdowns and two twos. And Hooser has another one blocked. It looked like Hutchins. 
Anderson blocked it. The second time that Louisville has been able to block a field goal, and it is still a three-score lead for the Cardinals. Welcome back to ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by IHG Hotels. This is the Dr. Pepper Championship Drive Game of the Week. And blocked kick special teams tonight. As much a story for Louisville as their run game. They blocked a pair, five on the year now. Three blocked field goals, two tonight. A couple of blocked punts as well. And they go back to the ground. Trying to slither free is Isaac Brown to Monte Capehart. Good to see him back on the field. Makes a tackle after a game of two and a half. So two and a half minutes gone by, Lewis, here in the fourth quarter. And if you're Clemson, you know, what, what do you do gamble-wise on defense here to sell out, I guess, to try to rip the ball out? You, yeah. know, you have to take some chances, I would think. I think you're going to see a lot of guys up around the line of scrimmage. You have to fortify the run front. You cannot allow this football team to continue to run the football as effectively as they have, averaging six yards per play on the night. You're gonna have to start taking some chances. When you get them in passing downs, you gotta send five or more. You gotta try and get this ball out. And Tyler Shuck snaps it with two seconds on the play clock, as they should. And they run it, and they don't pick up anything. Sammy Brown makes the stop. I always think it's also the sign of a well-coached team that if they are a tempo team, but then the game calls for slowing it down, oh, yeah. that they're comfortable then slowing it down. And obviously, the game now calls for slowing it down. Yeah, like Jeff Brom, the former quarterback who's played this game at a very high level, he understands game management and what it requires. And he also knows exactly how Clemson's gonna try and attack the football now. He, he knows he needs to emphasize ball security to his offense. And if you're Wes Goodwin, you're telling your defense, attack the football, tackle the football. They need a stop on third down. Flag down. And a throw away by Shuck. So that stops the clock as well with 11.08 to go. That certainly does Clemson a favor. And if this is a holding penalty, and it looks like it may be, it'll be declined. Holding. Holding. Offense number 70. Penalty is declined. So it's fourth down. That couldn't have worked out better for Clemson. That is a three and out with the clock stopped on third down. Now, what do you need? What do you need if you're Clemson? You've got Antonio Williams back here now to return the punt. But you're telling your punt return unit, hold them up at the line of scrimmage. Don't let the Gunners get down the field. And Antonio, do your thing. Fair catch at the 39-yard line. Clemson has it back with 11 minutes on Syracuse now. Bowl eligible as well. And SMU trubbing hit in the third quarter. Again, the winner of that game remains undefeated in ACC play. So some headlines in the ACC, and this would certainly be a headline in the ACC if the score stays as it is. In one way or the other, we're going to have a headline as Brinkstool starts this drive for Clemson with a seven-yard gain. As Lewis, we are either going to have a historic comeback in the last 11 minutes by Clemson, or we are going to have the first ever win for Louisville over Clemson. And Clemson will drop from the ranks of ACC unbeatens as well as this pass from Klubnik sails out of bounds. Yeah, it's just almost impossible to come in here and win at night since Dabo Sweeney's been coaching this football team here and tip your cap to Louisville right now as far as them being able to get on the same page defensively, iron out some of the wrinkles and some of the miscommunications that they have had and play a very solid game. And then again, the offensive line just dealing with injuries, shuffling it around all season long. And they keep Tyler shut clean the entire night thus far. Try run for a first down here with Mafa. He gets driven back. A gain of a yard on third and three. So now with ten and a half minutes to go, it is fourth down and one. Thor Griffith made the stop for Louisville. And obviously Clemson has to go for it. And they have to play with some tempo as well because they need three scores. Lubnick looks over. There's the slant, and the catch is big. The big hit was Bryant Wesco Jr., the freshman. But they are now two for three on fourth down 
They move the chains into plus territory again of six. That's just a big time catch by the freshman. He took a heck of a shot coming inside. Now you got to get him one on one. You got to get some chunk plays down the field. You've got to push the ball. Flubnik floats one over the head of Mafa, throws it away. You've been calling for them to push the ball and calling for chunk plays all night. It's, and yet it's basically been either the run game, occasionally a slant, or yeah. check down. They, they have not really even taken those shots. Why? Yeah, one, one of the things that I've, I've wondered is why they haven't been able to attack the middle of the field, running these cover two beaters, these two safety high beaters, whether it's cover two or four, running some high-low combinations inside because outside, they're not getting anything down the field on the outside. Draw play to Mafa. This one works. Mafa lowers his shoulders to the 30-yard line, a gain of 17. The Louisville is, is saying, look, you can get those runs all game long. Those aren't going to beat us. Those aren't going to bring you back. They're going to have to manufacture some offense throwing the football. Lubnick, he wants a shot, he has it, hoping for Stellato. And that was broken up. And you know, Quincy Riley nearly had a pick, he pounded the turf. The eighth pass broken up tonight by Kate, Louisville. Kate is late, he's late letting this go. The ball should be out of his hands right now, even before Stellato put his hand up. He saw it, he looked at it, he just hesitated and didn't pull the trigger. You see him there, he lets that go earlier, he hits that right in the window and it's something he's done all season long but for some reason tonight it just not has not been as clear for him has not been as decisive for him and they haven't tried to attack in the middle of the field as much quarterback draw love that gets to about the 22 yard line yard and a half shy of the first down clark turns him back so now it's going to be third down and a long one close to two Time ticks away. They're going to try and run for it. They're not going to get it. The freshman Jay Haynes is stopped. It's going to be fourth down again for Clemson outside the 20 yard line. The defensive front for Louisville just playing with a lot of physicality. Stan Quan Jay Quinn, Ashton Gelati. These guys have stepped up tonight and met force with force. The clock just continues to tick. And now a late substitution for Clemson. With the play clock at 10, they're still in the huddle. They might have to call a timeout here, and they will. Wow. Timeout. Clemson, their first. That's 36 timeout. seconds deep into the play. Sweeney just had to call a timeout. 36 seconds deep into the play clock. Because Ron English's defense is definitely frustrating Garrett Riley's offense. And now Lewis on fourth down and a couple. After the timeout, we'll see what Clemson has in store. Jet sweep. Antonio Williams turns the corner. He's got the first down. Tackled inbound, so that keeps the clock rolling. With under seven minutes and 50 seconds to go. And now we've got an injured player. For an injury to a defensive player. That's TJ Quinn, it would appear. So while they take a look at the ankle of TJ Quinn, a reminder, next Saturday on ABC and ESPN Plus, noon Eastern, number six Texas hosts Florida, who put a big scare into number two Georgia today. Georgia squares off against number 19 Ole Miss. And we'll cap the night with Alabama LSU. So another big SEC triple header on ABC next Saturday. And as far as that Alabama LSU game is concerned, the first time for Alabama with a couple of losses before the end of October since the first year of the Nick Saban regime. LSU four and seven against ranked opponents under Brian Kelly. So the loser of that game, you'd have to think probably on the Outside looking in, the winner of that game, in terms of being an at-large team for the college football playoff, yeah, alive. College game day will be live from Baton Rouge beginning next Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern.
on ESPN. So how about that? that's how important that game is. How about that third meeting this century without Coach Saban being a coach of one of those two teams? This speaks to my man's longevity and how much he impacted that series directly himself. Just heavyweight Titans going at it here in the month of November. Clemson with a fresh set of downs in the red zone. They'll toss one to Maffa. Gets to the 10. Out of bounds. At about the 7. They'll mark him out at the 8. He picks up 7. They've got to get this ball in the end zone here. At this rate, they're simply going to run out of time, and the crowd can sense it. Yeah, and so can we up here. I mean, it's just, this is going to be a game that's dissected in the end. And they're huddling with 7.13 to go, down three scores. Lutnick on a rollout. To the front pylon, incomplete. It's just late. The release is late. He gave the DB time to make up ground. That ball's got to be gone out of his hand. Before Antonio Williams makes his final break, you're going to see that ball's got to be gone now. And he's thrown with anticipation so far this year. But you let it go that late. These DBs, especially a guy of Quincy Riley's caliber, they're just going to make up ground. You're giving him a chance to recover and finish on that last part of the down with a PBU. It's been the story of this game tonight. Play clock's at nine, and Klubnik is still communicating. They can't take a delay of game penalty here. Play clock at two. Needs to get the snap off and does. Underneath. Wesco bottled up. That's a first down. But again, the clock is going to continue to roll with 6.45 to go. See the Louisville defenders taking their time. The Louisville defenders taking their time getting up off the ground. Just trying to let this clock keep ticking. Maffa stopped. It'll be second down and goal. 623 remaining. All the coaches on the sideline screaming to the players, get lined up. Play action. Back of the end zone and complete. Klubnik had Antonio Williams wide open and just threw it behind him. It's just that kind of night. It's just been off a tick over and over and over again. You're going to see it here. It's perfect. He's wide open. He freezes the nickel defender, Antonio Watts. Just kind of just toss it to him, and it's an easy catch. It's an easy touchdown. Some kind of scoop and score, pick six, 
force fumble to turn for a touchdown. You need something big, something out of the ordinary. You're going to have to create something. Well, now they still need two touchdowns in the last six minutes. You see Louisville putting the hands team on the field. So an onside kick. It looks like at least Louisville is ready for it. And it is bunked it ahead. And Clemson is after it. There's a scramble for it. Clemson thinks they may have recovered. I think they got it. There's going to be a mad scramble underneath that pile, but I think a Clemson... Louisville believes they've got it. The officials have yet to signal. No, it is Louisville ball. He lost it underneath there. there obviously, there's a lot of battling that goes on underneath there. You ever at the bottom of that pile? It's, yeah, it's, it not, pre it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not pretty. I'm afraid to ask you there if it's a story you can even say on the air what the worst thing that ever happened to you well, at the bottom nothing, of one of those piles. Nothing like that, but I can just tell you this. There are some people <laughs> absolutely going at it. And in a situation like this, that's exactly what you're expected to do. They signaled Louisville football, and now we've got a conference. And they're going to stay with that call. Please reset the game. But the crowd is screaming because they thought they saw a replay that Five indicated recovery by their team. And on that replay, hard to tell. Uh, the Louisville sideline, or rather the Clemson sideline, pointing at the board. They might have a case. Kick recovery by Louisville is under further review. So now replay is going to get involved. It did. It looked and initially. It did look initially as if a player from Clemson recovered the ball. Coverage defender had gotten it. Like I said, things happen underneath that pile. Well, Matt replay, Matt Austin, our officiating expert, replay is going to get involved. Matt, what do you see? Well, it, regardless of who recovered, if Clemson recovered the ball, they had two players that were downfield blocking before they were eligible to touch the ball. Number 17 was one, and I didn't get the other number. So even if Clemson is determined to recover this, they're going to have to re-kick because they can't keep it because they fouled. Ronan Hannafin, number 16. It looks like may have the football there. Now, Matt, my question would be, if a flag was not thrown for a player downfield blocking, as you say, and that call was not made on the field, is that a foul that replay can then call? Or if that foul hasn't been called on the field, is that something the officials miss and the only thing that can be replayed or at least decided upon here is possession? No, this is one of the few fouls that can be reviewed, and it's because the onside kick is one of the hardest plays to officiate because the officials never get to see it. You see one or two a year. So with all the bodies coming together, it's hard to tell who blocked who, when, who touched the ball. So they opened up that, that the block, the illegal block to replay. So yes, replay should be able to take a look at this and easily determine that it's a foul. Here's the After announcement. Further review, the ruling on the field stands. Well, with no explanation as to whether or not there were downfield blocks that were not allowed or whether or not it was recovery or not by Clemson. They just let the call stand and that unfortunately has now drawn the ire of the crowd and now we've got the crowd acting in a completely inappropriate way as now a lot of debris is being thrown on the field and now the cheerleaders have to run out of the end zone, not only to help clear the field, but also to dodge water bottles that are being thrown in their direction. That's an interesting situation. So not only do they not correct the situation in terms of Clemson blocking before they were allowed to, in which case Matt, as he alluded to, would institute a re-kick, they also don't, they say, hey, look, you know, you lost the ball underneath the pile by the time we got to it to determine who had possession, then so be it. Louisville's ball. Interesting chain of events. 
And so Louisville's got it, and Clemson will be desperate for a takeaway. And they're not going to take it away. They're not even going to stop the run game. Padding the lead. Isaac Brown. Touchdown. been this kind of execution all night long on the part of the Louisville offensive line. And once we show it to you, you couldn't have drawn this up any better and, or executed this any better. Isaac Brown averages seven and a half yards per attempt. Top ten in America. He's averaging 8.8 .8 yards per attempt tonight against this Clemson defense. 149 yards rushing. A career high and tack on a 45 yard touchdown. You just take a look at it. You're going to get two down blocks and you're going to get two pullers around the edge. And just watch Isaac Brown just follow it. Just watch the hat on a hat. Watch how everyone sustains their block at the point of attack. It's perfect. It's the perfectly blocked play. All he has to do is run and then use that blazing speed that he has shown all year long. If you're Jeff Brom, when you turn on the tape tomorrow and you're having an offensive staff meeting, that right there should be the first play that you show. That if we can do this, and we can execute like this, we can play with anybody in the country offensively. Because that is a perfect, perfectly executed. Now, Lewis, this with an offensive line. That is as banged up as it gets. They've started eight different offensive linemen this season. Two of those guys are out for the year with injury. And they've got Monroe Mills starting at a tackle spot, playing with a significant injury to one of his knees. And yet they have owned the line of scrimmage tonight. They have run for 208 yards. For the second consecutive week, no sacks allowed, 6.5 yards per play. It's just been an amazing, amazing performance. And when we looked at this game on the tape and looked at it on paper and really tried to game out how this was going to go, you would have thought that the power and athleticism of the Clemson defensive line would have really been able to take advantage of this banged up unit, and that hasn't even come close to being the case. So Klubnik to Wesco. And a catch and run out to the 44-yard line. Up on five and a half minutes to go. And now this is the tempo that the crowd was, I think, yelling at Clemson to play with when the game was still in doubt. Run up there, snap the ball, and go. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense that this is what they're doing now, but didn't in the series prior or any of the other series when they knew that the game was in question and they needed to pick up the tempo. and weaves his way for a first down, but it is academic now with five minutes remaining as Louisville has put this one away. So they are going to beat Clemson for the first time in the history of this matchup as they have lost all previous eight matchups between the two schools. As Mafa makes a tackle, heads to the sideline and gets to the red zone before going out of bounds. 19-yard line and Jake Griffin bumped him out We've got a player slow to get up and now going down is Jordan Garad for an injury to a defensive player 438 to go and your keys to the game Lewis how they played out and it is textbook for Louisville it sure is start fast score first look well, this is something that they've really struggled with and they really they jumped out on this on this team here at Clemson and they never let up communicate limit the missed tackles defensively I didn't see a single coverage bust on the part of the Louisville defense all night long they looked about as poised and calm as they have all season long finally playing to their potential offensively for Clemson attack the middle of the field I've been talking about it all night long they have not been able to attack this too high safety scheme whatsoever 
have not had any cover two or cover four beaters, it looked like in the game plan at all. And the result is 142 pass yards, which is way below what you become accustomed to with Clemson. And then defensively, maximum pressure, whether that be with four or sending extra blitzers, which is something Wes Goodwin, the defensive coordinator, likes. And just look at that. Goose egg, zero sacks. Tyler Shuck has been sitting back there all night just dicing up this defense, whether it be throwing the football when he needed to or taking off running. Lovnick chased. And he runs out of room. Miles Jernigan chased him out. And most likely go as a sack. He lost about three yards. And that keeps the clock rolling as well. As we approach four minutes to go. Jeff Brom talked to us about the fact that last week's game was one of the most excruciating that he has ever had as a head coach how that first half went against Boston College how do you think it feels tonight like he talked about like he said at halftime he was just sitting there thinking man what else can go wrong in this football game and then they absolutely just blitzed him in the second half offensively and defensively got some stops and they carried that momentum right into this game Third down here run it with Mafa he doesn't get much yeah, right next to the alumni stadium at BC, there's the Chestnut Hill Reservoir, and he called it a lake. He said, I just wanted to go jump in that lake and have nobody pull me out when it was 20 to nothing. Yeah. But they scored a touchdown right, right before the, halftime. Right. They got some momentum. And boy, the hero of that game, he never scored, but it was Ja'Cory Brooks. Ja'Cory Brooks caught about five hospital balls in that game. It yeah. was so tough. And helped bring them back. The field is the ball carrier's forward progress was stopped for a first down. And they're going to say that it's another turnover on downs here. Did Mafa fight his way for a first down? Again, with three minutes to go and a 19 point lead. Yes, it is first and goal for Clemson. But to come from. Is challenging the woman on the field. Of the first down. And Louisville's going to challenge the spot, but to come from 20 points down last week on the road and to win that game, come from two scores down in the fourth quarter, the first time that they had done that in 47 games for Jeff Brom's team, and then to come into this environment tonight and do this to Clemson, very impressive. And Klubnik on the quarterback sneak was given forward progress to the line to gain, and, and it's hard Brom challenge. Hard to see from that angle. Well, again, our, actually is. our yellow line is not official. I mean, it's usually very accurate, but it did look like you could make an argument he came up at least short of the yellow line. Regardless of the outcome of this play, the resilience of the Louisville Cardinal football team as you see Jeff Brown walking there back to the sideline. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Replay stopped the game prior to Louisville challenging the play. They still have their timeout and the challenge. He talked about the resilience of his football team and how they continued to fight and how it wasn't pretty, but they were able to get the W and he felt as though if they could just eliminate some of the mistakes on defense, he knew that they could score on offense. He got a little bit worried about their depth on the offensive line. But he sounded very optimistic about his team overall in terms of its ability to make plays. Lubnick, fade round, jump ball, incomplete. Hoping for Adam Randall. Quincy Riley was there. Timeout for an injury to a defensive player. And it's Riley who's down. That is not what Louisville wants to see. Again, he fought back from a high ankle sprain back in September. We had their game against SMU mm. back at the beginning of October, and it was one of those, I'm going to try and warm up and see if I can go, and he could not go. So it kind of slowly worked his way back into the lineup. But he's their best cover corner. You actually asked him a very interesting question. We talked to him this week. You yeah. asked him, did, was he a baseball player? Yeah, I mean, just because a personnel guy, 
That's just a question you ask guys to track the ball with. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he was someone who I said, I just kind of asked him on a whim. I said, look, do you have a baseball in your background? Because he's a fantastic track athlete. 10, 400 meter guy, 21, 7, 200 meter guy, or 21, 3, 200 meter guy. I said, do you have baseball in your background? You have 14 career interceptions. He's like, that was one of my first loves as a kid. But then he gave it up to run track and to play football. The clock incorrectly ran. 2.50 on the game clock, and it starts on the snap. But you said it was, it, it's interesting it's, how it, often guys that play in the secondary who have great ball skills have a baseball background. And they sure do, because <laughs> baseball outfielders in particular have this great hand-eye coordination and depth perception. Well, Nick to Brenningstool, out of the one-yard line. And he clearly has it. You don't get 14 interceptions by accident. Unless you can catch yeah. and track the ball. And it's a Maffa. Wow. And they are playing with pride, certainly, on that Louisville defense as Maffa tries to fight his way into the end zone. And he can't beat Stan Quan Clark. Hutchinson there as well. You just see this front seven for Louisville all night long. Stan Quan Clark has been all over the field. And these linebackers have been just coming downhill. Maffa. Inside the pylon for a touchdown. Pursuit to the pylon. It has just been a struggle. It's been a struggle for Clemson's offense all night long, as we talked about. The run game has been there, but you know what? The run game's kind of been there because Ron English allowed it to be there. He said, look, we're not you're not gonna beat us just running the football for seven, eight, nine yards a clip. As long as we don't give up the big plays, we like our chances because that's what has hurt us all year. Again, when the only thing mathematically that makes sense is going for two, they kick the extra point, but I guess with 2.07 to go, probably doesn't matter that much. Now, coming up on Sports Center right after our game, well, Penn State gets stopped four times on the goal line by Ohio State, and James Franklin and the Nittany Lions lose to the Buckeyes again. Cam Ward caps a big comeback by the Canes. Five touchdowns in that performance. And we will take our first crack at predicting the 12 team CFP rankings that get released on Tuesday. Sports Center with Michael Eves and Christina Alexander is coming up next here on ESPN. Another onside kick. This one jumping forward. Louisville touches it and makes that ball live. Probably didn't need to do that, but. They get the recovery anyway, with 2.06 remaining. Let me just tell you something, Bob. Playing on the front line of the hands team is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> and sometimes you figure, you know what, I should just go ahead and attack the ball instead of waiting for it as people are barreling down on you. You just got to be sure that you can get it, because once that ball starts bouncing around, there you see they try to recover it quickly. You got to keep your hands up and just kind of cradle that ball on the ground. Clemson had a shot at it. Things happen fast down there on the hands team and onside kick situations. And Chris Hughes gambled and the ball hit his helmet. But he was backed up by his mates. And so now with 2.06 to go. And only two timeouts left as well for Clemson. And they need two scores. Louisville back to the offense. Flags down. Looks like a false start. Snap infraction. Offense number 56. Five yard penalty. First step. This has got to be an extremely disappointing performance for Dabo Sweeney, who told us, look, at coming out of that Georgia game, at the beginning of the season that he had no questions in his mind that they had all the big things that they needed to play football at a high level here at Clemson that it just they just needed to stop hurting themselves make a play here or there and iron out some of those little details now this running play here stopped stopped up by the Clemson defense takes us to the two-minute timeout the two-minute timeout 
will step aside and come right back to Death Valley. Well, some major Saturday storylines in the world of college football. Ohio State, another win over Penn State. In a matchup of top five teams, the Buckeyes overcome an early 10-0 deficit to win 20-13. Texas Tech upsets Iowa State. So BYU, the last team standing. As far as undefeated teams, the Big 12 are concerned. And a major shakeup again as Clemson, Clemson calls timeout here. 30 seconds. Bob Shoes and Lewis Riddick and Chris Button here at Death Valley. A major shakeup here. In the ACC, Lewis, we're going to have Miami and SMU are going to be the lone remaining undefeated ACC teams on kind of a collision course to meet in the ACC championship game. Yeah, we've got a chance to see both of those. Both of these teams are just super explosive on the offensive side of the ball. That could be a shootout. Strong offensive lines, you're right. And Cam Ward, Kevin Jennings, two of the most exciting quarterbacks in college football. Cam Ward just continues to just, I mean, put up unbelievable numbers. Just unbe he throws the ball against everybody. Yep. And Kevin Jennings struggled a week ago. It'll be interesting to see what his game looked like tonight. They absolutely took my alma mater and just spanked them tonight down there in Dallas. I tried to avoid that as much yeah. as I could. Apologize. Yeah, I'm aware. It's all yeah. good. I, you know, as a teammate, I didn't want to <laughs> bring it up. But yeah, that would be a heck of a game between SMU and Clemson, Miami for sure. Third and final. 30 yeah. seconds. And as we head towards the first release of the college football playoff standings from the committee themselves, yeah. because that comes out on Tuesday, and we've been talking all along. Obviously, the most important college football playoff release is the last one. That determines who plays in each game. That's what makes it official. I think the first one might be the next most important because it gives everyone the jumping off point of where they think these te is there going to be a major SEC influence and I right. think one of the most interesting teams is going to be SMU yeah for where sure. do they rank SMU are they going to send a message to the ACC that if Miami wins the ACC championship game they're the only team that gets in or are they going to send a message that maybe there is an at-large possibility other than Miami to get in or is it going to be Miami wins the ACC championship yep. game, they're the lone re representative, or SMU wins the ACC championship game, then maybe Miami gets in as an at-large and there are two teams. And well, the, who knows the, from this league standpoint? The committee has said, look, it's, it's their intention to have the best teams yep. in the playoff, not the most deserving, the best. Please reset the game clock to 144. And there is a distinct, distinction between the two, which means watching the games Seeing how they played, the what their you. resume is, I mean, all that's going to be factored in. And right now, if you've watched SMU play, you would say they're one of the 12 best, or rather, they're, they're going to be right there. Let's just put it that way. They're going to be right there in the end for consideration. And Chris Budden was part of that mock selection committee. Chris, you've been through this exercise. Interested to see how the first standings uh, appear on Tuesday night. Yeah, and the interesting part is the executive director, Rich Clark, talked this week about what happens if someone like an SMU loses in a championship game. Do you penalize them? That would be two losses, but they're playing in the championship, and that's an extra bullet point to look at. And that the idea is you should not try and penalize those who have qualified for a championship game, which otherwise, if they were not playing in it and ran the table, would be 11 and 1. So it really should only yeah. be a reward. It shouldn't be a penalty were right. they to lose it. Which really supports what we're saying, right? They want the best teams in. And they don't want to. You know, they want they want to penalize. They really want to reward teams for going up against quality competition, having quality wins, playing a tough schedule. I mean, and look, SMU right now, it'll be. Yeah, you are right when we say it'll be interesting to see how the rankings look once they come out. Because they've been watching these games very closely. And there's been some good football being played. Look, the team we just saw a week ago, Ole Miss. Yep. Right, which is another team that people will discuss ad nauseum as we move down here through the latter part of the schedule. It'd be hard. I mean, after you've seen how they played this play today, how could you not say that this is a football team that isn't one of the 12 best in the country? Absolutely. 
Lane Kiffin well, again, talked, to us, talked to us about that, that there's going to be somebody who's going to be disappointed and get left out. There's going to be a good football team that gets left out. He's just hoping it wasn't going to be his. The only thing we've had to go off of so far has been the AP poll. Right. Right. That's it. So we've used the AP poll with all of the rankings. The AP poll may bear little to no resemblance to the college football playoff standings might when they come out on Tuesday night. That's why I think the first actual standings that the committee puts out on Tuesday night, that shows the frame of reference that we'll be operating off of the rest right. of the way. As Klubnik with 50 seconds to go, looks over the middle, throws one high, it's tipped and falls incomplete. Because right now, you, you look at how many SEC and Big Ten teams are in, say, the top 15 or so. Well, if the standings come out on Tuesday night, and you've got, say, six SEC teams in the top 13, well, okay. Right. Now the committee is sending a loud and clear message. Right. right. There are going to be a bunch of SEC teams that probably are going to be thought of as at-large teams. They're telling you with those rankings where they're weighting the teams in terms of the leagues. Yep. And as Klubnik up against the sidelines, got nowhere to go. And that's why I think an SMU is a perfect example. They're going to tell us on Tuesday night yeah. that well, second the team. Was out of bounds before he released the pass. It's third down. That second team, like a you know a second place team like an Iowa State or mm -hmm. a Kansas State, say in a, a league like the Big 12, where will that team compare to those middle of the road teams in the SEC? Right. Right. Well, having like like I said, having not seen. SMU live already against this Previous Louisville team. Is under further review. You know, Colorado is a one-loss Big 12 team right now, right? But a two-loss team overall. You know, that even Iowa State losing for the first time today. Where did they drop to? Where, where did they factor in? There, a lot There's will a be lot revealed on yeah. Tuesday night, and I'm going to be as interested as anyone to see yeah. it. Tuesday night's kind of a big night. Yes, it is. Kind of a big night. Yeah. Tell you this was supposed to be a big night for Clemson too and, and as we're sitting here talking about all these different college football playoff scenarios you just wonder you just wonder about the performance that Clemson has put out here tonight and I can't help but think look Cade Klubnik had looked so sharp all season long since the Georgia game I mean, he has just been on it and it just it seems as though the timing has just been off. It's just this something has not clicked here tonight at all. After further review, the quarterback was inbounds when he released the ball. It's an incomplete pass. It will be third down and 10 at the 45 yard line. Well, now if you're Clemson after tonight, again, you're only a one loss team in your league. There's nothing to say that the other teams in your league can't also be upset. Right. Now you're going to need some tiebreaker help. So what you're hoping is that things break your way. You have to run the table. Right. You have to finish the year as a one loss team and you have to get in as that second team in the championship game. And then if you win the championship game, you get an automatic bid. Right. You're in the college football playoff. Yeah, as Dabo Sweeney said, though, in some of the promos that we ran, some of the interviews we ran earlier on the broadcast, a win tonight, though, means that they're still in control of their own destiny. And now, that has changed. Yes. And that is something I don't think he was anticipating. Look, we all know we have to go out and play the game, but I think with the way his football team had been playing, he was pretty confident coming into this game and then coming off a of bye week. Yep, SMU and Miami are the only two teams that now control their destiny. Right. And those two teams don't play any of the other teams that they have to worry about. Right. So Clemson can't affect that destiny. They don't play Miami. They don't play SMU. So they can't get on the same field and beat them. They have to help. They have to hope for help. Mm -hmm. It is just unbelievably quiet in here right now. I mean, these fans that are left, just stunned. Staying in bounds is Olsen, Pat Henry. And let's see if Clemson even runs another play. They're going to get lined back up, and it looks like they'll snap it again as Klubnik's going to actually spike it on first down with 11 seconds to go. Prior to the snap, timeout, Louisville, their first, 30 seconds. 
So Louisville called the timeout on defense. So we're going to update the ACC standings. Now we haven't officially changed the SMU pit portion of the standings yet, but it'll be a loss for Pitt to SMU. So SMU will advance to 5 and 0 and tie Miami atop the conference standings. Pitt will drop from the ranks of the unbeaten. And of course, Clemson now, this will be their first conference loss. There's going to be a one loss team that's going to make a conference championship game somewhere in here. And probably win it. 12 seconds. That's college sure. football. It's, exactly. It happens. So if you're a Clemson fan, just have to hope you get the right help. You find a way to wiggle into that second spot, and then you get, get your the puncher's game. chance that's against. Right. Either SMU or Miami, if one of those teams should fall. Sometimes it's just not your night. I mean, we're sitting here talking about these scenarios. And again, I, I can't help but to stare down here at this field. And just basic throws being missed, Bob. Just basic throws. Lubnick to Maffa. Uh, what will be the final play of the night? That's the end of the game. 